Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had the cursed blood and become vampire. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. The sun beat down. Ever so softly on the village hidden in the leaves. Kakashi had excited as he walked along the street to the meeting place where he was to meet his squad for the first time. He mused to himself as he walked, so I get an even mix of students. The mediocre Sakura, the genius Sasuke, and the unpredictable loser Naruto Uzumaki. Still can't believe that kid beat Mizuki. Must be pretty tough and pretty dense to attack a chunin like that. Kakashi had been given the rundown on his three students. Sakura Haruno was an unremarkable Kanoichi from a civilian family. Her strength was chakra control. Sasuke Chiha was a gifted genius with a talent for just about everything. And Naruto. The Kyubi's container was an overactive spaz who couldn't sit still and who didn't think about anything before he did it. That last description had been straight from the Lord Third. He found it amazing that he would have such misfortune. He thought, I can almost see it unfolding. The Achiha will be arrogant and dismissive. Naruto will be predictably unpredictable and he'll act like a complete idiot. Sakura. Hmm. Not sure about her, but from what Aruka tells me she will most likely be head over heels for the cool kid. Dot, this is going to be taxing. He opened his Icha Icha book and began to read as his feet took him to his destination on his own. Naruto stumbled and fell. His neck was bleeding. He could feel the hot rush of blood going down into his orange jacket. He thought to himself as he dragged himself to his feet. Damn. What the hell was that thing? It came out of nowhere. Ouch. It hurts. Shit. He had been late to his meeting with the rest of his squad already. But now he had to go all the way back to his apartment to get a change of clothes because some freaky bad thing had taken a chunk out of him. He silently cursed whatever type of animal it had been. His neck was burning like fire. His apartment door opened and he quickly moved to the bathroom where he stripped off his jacket and shirt. Both were soaked with blood. Red was still pouring down his neck. He grabbed a washcloth and shoved it under the faucet. Then once it was soaked he pressed it into his wound. Erg. It hurt so bad. It made him see stars. Blinking he wiped the area around the wound and pulled the cloth away. What the? There were two slashes in his neck where the thing had bitten him. Naruto vaguely remembered that some animals had a toxin in their saliva that made wounds bleed a lot more than they should. That must be it. No way these little cuts could bleed this much otherwise. Naruto slapped a bandage onto it. He didn't have time to take care of it properly. Instead he winched a tourniquet onto it. As hard as he could to keep the pressure on the bandage. After he was done with it he hurriedly washed the blood off his chest and his hands. After that he ran into the other room to grab new clothes. He slipped on one of his less used jackets. This one was also orange, but it lacked the white collar. Naruto put on a black shirt first to cover up the bite. He didn't want anyone giving him a hard time about it. No doubt Sakura would take the chance to demean him in front of Sasuke. That prick. I swear one day I'll put his head through a wall. And I'll do it way before I become Hokage. He doesn't have that long to wait. Naruto pulled on the jacket and dashed out of his apartment. He jumped from rooftop to rooftop in order to get there on time. He had been going fine for a few minutes, but soon his neck and shoulder began to throb. Naruto thought, such a pain. I put the tourniquet on too tight. He continued on despite the growing pain. It wasn't long before he caught sight of where he was supposed to be. Hakakashi sensei still isn't here. Naruto landed with a grunt of pain. It made his head spin for a moment. Sakura and Sasuke were there already. Of course. Sakura with her pink hair and less than cheery disposition. Actually. Sakura was quite happy at the moment. Naruto thought, yeah I bet she's been hugging all over that jerk. The thought crossed his mind that Sasuke looked even more annoyed than usual. Serves him right. Sakura asked, Naruto. Why are you always so late? Naruto grimaced in pain. And agitation. He said, listen Sakura. I'm not feeling good right now. Could you give it a rest? Sakura looked at him in shock. She thought, what is up with Naruto? He's never like this. And what does he mean by, he's not feeling well? He always jokes about never getting sick and always being in top shape. The idiot would never admit that he was hurt. Must be an act. She said, yeah. Nice excuse for being late Naruto Baka. Behind Sakura, Sasuke's eye twitched, will she ever shut up? Bakashi looked up to the roof of the building where he could hear voices. He thought, I guess everyone is here. He crouched and leaped up to land on the handrail that bordered the roof. Sasuke was sitting off to the side with his chin resting on his hands. He managed to pull off board and superior at the same time with great success. Sakura had gone silent when she realized that their sensei had arrived. Naruto was wincing. Probably from her shouting in his ear. Naruto on the other hand was not like Kakashi imagined. 
He was a bit rough around the edges. He had extremely unruly blonde hair, deep blue eyes, and tan skin. He was wearing a dark orange jacket and black combat pants. Not the usual outfit. He looked annoyed. Kakashi said, okay everyone I hope you're feeling okay because this is our first day as Squad 7. Sasuke's eyes flicked towards him, while Naruto and Sakura just turned their heads to listen. Kakashi continued, however we aren't actually a team yet. Before I accept you as members of Team 7 you have a test. But that's for later. He settled into a sitting position, facing the three kids. He said, first I think it's time to get to know each other a little better. Kakashi expected Naruto to leap up and shout his life's goal. Not that Kakashi didn't already know what it was. The kid was obsessed over becoming Hokage. But Naruto didn't jump up. Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Okay. No one wants to start. How about you Sakura? What are some of your likes and dislikes and what is your dream for the future? Sakura blushed and looked at Sasuke. Who remained purposefully ignorant of the attention. She said, well someone I like is. She looked at Sasuke. And my dreams of the future are. Her blush deepened as she started to scoot towards Sasuke. Kakashi asked, and your dislikes? Sakura's head whipped to where Naruto was sitting. Kakashi thought, ah. At least two of my predictions are spot on. He said, okay Sakura that's enough. Sasuke. How about you? The Ichiha continued to look forward as he spoke, there's not many things I like. And there's a lot of things I dislike. As for my ambition. It's to kill a certain someone. Kakashi mentally sweat dropped, geez this kid is a bit morbid. No surprises there though. Finally he turned to Naruto who had actually closed his eyes. Kakashi thought, wow. He isn't the spaz that everyone says he is. He seems a lot calmer than I expected. And he hasn't said one outrageous thing yet. Kakashi asked, Naruto. Dislikes. Likes. Dreams. Naruto opened his eyes. He said, I like Raymond. And training. I like playing pranks and. Sleeping in late. I don't like bullies or mean people. My goal. Is to become the greatest Tokage. Kakashi thought that he must be losing it. The way the kid said it. He actually thought that it was true. Naruto has something. Not sure what though, but seeing who his parents are. It's not that I wouldn't expect it. Kakashi sighed and said, okay. Now that we know each other a bit better. I think it's about time I tell you where the test will be. Go to training field 7 tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. I'll be there for the test. If you fail my test. You won't just fail to become part of my squad. You'll all go back to the academy. Sasuke looked up in shock, and so did Sakura. Both of them gaped at him. Naruto stood up and said, I'm. Not. Feeling. Very good. See you tomorrow sensei. Kakashi watched Naruto as he jumped to the next rooftop and then to the next. He was soon out of sight. He couldn't help it. He asked Sakura, is he usually like that? She shook her head and even Sasuke shrugged in confusion. Kakashi wondered what was wrong with Naruto. Pain. It was excruciating. Like liquid fire being injected into his blood. It was like someone was beating every inch of him with electrified bat. He had barely been able to get through that meeting. It was like trying to take a test while someone was pulling your fingernails out with a pair of pliers. Naruto was on his bed, twitching every few seconds as a fresh wave of pain hit him. This shitty feeling crawling up his body. Like he was weighed down. He tried to lift his head, but he. Couldn't even do that. Naruto felt sweat dripping all over his body, almost like he was running a marathon. He prayed that the misery would stop soon. This was too much. The cool air from the window ghosted over his skin, soothing his tenderized nerves. It had been awful. He couldn't even cry out. His voice had been paralyzed. Naruto lifted his head. He was so sore, but at least he could move. Four hours at least. Four hours of constant unbearable pain, but he didn't faint. Now he was lying in his sweat-soaked bed, as his body slowly recovered from the. What the fuck was that? I don't even know what caused it. It was like I just started to feel it when Kakashi showed up and it got worse. Naruto slowly, hesitantly, sat up. The whole room spun around him. He laid back down, but the room didn't stop moving. Sitting up again didn't improve the situation. Naruto used both hands to steady himself. This was his room and it wasn't. Supposed. To dot move. A massive pang in his stomach alerted him to his hunger. Once he realized that he hadn't eaten since breakfast his mind centered on food. Like a drone locking onto a target. He jumped out of bed with surprising grace and moved to the refrigerator. He yanked it open and pulled out everything he had. Then he opened up the cupboard and pulled out six packages of instant ramen. He got down to eating. Forty minutes later he was full, but still just as hungry as he started. And thirsty too. He had found out how dry his mouth was soon after he started eating. And dot nothing was improving on the problem. Naruto's nose felt cold. Like a dog's too. He wondered if he was getting sick. I never get sick. Not even once since I can remember. 
what is wrong with me? I ate enough food for a whole day, and I'm still starving, and my mouth feels like I swallowed a piece of sandpaper. He begrudgingly decided that he had caught something. Somehow. Naruto found fresh clothes again. He bundled himself up and opened the door to go outside. He was back in the room with the door slamming behind him before he could scream. A axied. Naruto lay gasping on the floor. His face and hands felt like someone had scraped the skin off with a cheese grater and then poured lemon juice on him. Fortunately. Thank the Kami. The pain stopped quickly. He rolled over and let his breathing slow back down. Minutes passed before Naruto dared to get up again. He groaned and flexed his hands while moving his facial muscles. His skin felt stiff and uncomfortable as though he had burned his whole hand. Naruto moved to the window and drew the shade back. Immediately he shrieked in pain and jumped back across the room. His face and hand burning again. His eyes were wide as he tried to look at the light pouring across the floor. It was too bright. Not like sunlight, but like staring directly at the sun. Naruto again let his breathing slow. The pain receded and he warily stood up. He walked over to the window, just out of the range of the light and looked outside. It was still a few hours till dark. The buildings outside were bathed in light. Naruto had developed a nearly instant dislike of it. He took a cautious step forward, the illumination from the window reached his knees. He slowly pulled up the leg of his pants. And the light touched his bare feet. Naruto fell back out of the light and bit his tongue to prevent from crying out again. He thought, why is the light hurting me? This is messed up. How the hell? Naruto stood and inched along the wall. He darted his hand out and closed the drapes. For a brief second his hand burned and then the light was gone. He sighed in relief. He walked over and dropped into a chair. He didn't know what was going on, but he wasn't sick. Never in his life had he heard of someone being allergic to sunlight. At least that's what it had felt like. Naruto suddenly felt tired. Unbelievably tired. Like a wave of lethargy washing over him. He yawned loudly and sat up straighter in his chair. He struggled to keep his eyes open. Standing up, he moved to the bed, but he dropped a few feet short. Like a rock he hit the floor. His eyes already closed, he surrendered to sleep. The next morning Naruto woke Dottie was on the floor in his room. He pushed himself to a sitting position and looked at his alarm clock. It was 6.59. His alarm would go off any second now. The number switched to 7 o'clock and an ear-splitting shriek came out of the little clock. Naruto snapped his hands to his ears and as his eyes popped open wide. He jumped up and ran to the clock. He brought his foot up and slammed it down on the clock, smashing it to pieces. Naruto let his hands drop and slumped to the bed. His tenderized eardrums ringing from the noise. Naruto said out loud, when did my alarm get so loud? It almost made me go deaf. Naruto let out a long pain sigh and allowed himself to slip off the edge of the bed and onto the floor with a thump. This day was already rating high on his list of worst days ever. So far it was about a six. Yesterday holding the space above it. He closed his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. His thoughts turned without him though. What is happening to me? I must be dreaming, but why does everything hurt so bad? And I'm still staving and thirsty and tired. He sat up annoyed, and I still have a test with Kakashi Sensei today. In one hour. Damn. Naruto stood and headed in the bathroom. On instinct he flick on the lights. Momentarily blinded by the light he stopped dead. He smiled, at least I don't have to worry about in home lights, but what is up with sunlight? He didn't like the idea of doing any activity out during the day. But that amount of pain he experienced just trying to close the drapes. He couldn't imagine fighting like this. Naruto sniffed the air as he opened the toothpaste. He almost choked. Minty freshness burned the inside of his nose. His hand clasped his nose shut as he closed the toothpaste. Naruto cautiously replaced it in the drawer and removed his hand from his nose. The smell of mint was still overpowering. His eyes watered with it and he reached for a towel to dry his eyes. Once he did so. Something caught his eye. More to the point. His eyes caught his eye. Naruto looked at his reflection in the bathroom mirror. They were stormy and the color kept shifting. Red peeking through, turning his iris purple. He blinked several times, but it didn't go back to normal. Naruto thought, do I go to the hospital? No. They probably wouldn't even treat me. Stupid village. So I have to do sensei's test like this huh? Okay. I'll show them who the real ninja is. It took 30 minutes for Naruto to work out how he would go with as little skin showing as possible. He wore his usual jacket with a black hoodie under that. He also put on gloves and put on black socks before strapping his combat sandals on. This should do it. Last he put on a pair of shades. He still had some skin showing, but he would just have to deal with the pain. Naruto tried to eat, but his stomach rejected the ramen. For the first time in his life. He couldn't stand the taste of ramen. It upset him more than. Just about anything had for a long time. Water and milk met with similar fates. Naruto growled in anger. This was not a good day. Not at all. 
So now he stood at the door, ready to go out. He looked at the solid wood of the door and gritted his teeth. He put his hand on the doorknob and left his apartment in one fluid movement. Several things happened at once. First his skin began to itch and burn. Then the light blinded him, even through his shades. And finally his nose picked up every scent for 100 feet around him. As an afterthought his ears decided to pick up the sound of a door slamming a building away as a sonic boom next to him. He winced away from it. Naruto then bit back a groan as his skin crawled with acid fire. Straightening and adjusting his hood, he walked down from his apartment. Once he was on the street he adjusted. Slowly and painfully. To the sensory overload. It was like he was picking up every scent sound and sight with unnatural clarity. But he was so distracted by the burning pain of his exposed skin that he wasn't really paying attention. He was heading outside the village to training field 7 when he bumped into someone. His head snapped up to see who it was as he reached out to steady. Her. He caught the girl before she fell. She got her bearing and looked up at him. She was shorter than him with blue-black hair and lavender eyes. Naruto felt his pulse quicken of its own accord. His vision went blurry for a second and he asked, Hey are you okay? Uh. Hinata. Hinata, who was one of the girls from the academy, nodded shyly. She was blushing hugely. Her hands came together and she twiddled her fingers. She said, HH hi. Naruto. Um. Th. Thanks. For catch. Ing me. Naruto's mind went blank. His eyes caught the flush on her pale skin. The red that suffused her cheeks and spread down her neck. His nose picked up her scent. And his ears registered her. Her heartbeat. Quick and hard. Naruto's mouth began to water and he pulled back from her. He had to get away from her. Naruto dashed down the alley to his left as fast as he could go. He ran at an inhuman sprint from the middle of the village all the way to the training field where the test was supposed to take place. There he stopped under the shade of a large tree. His heart was jackhammering in his chest and his stomach was twisted in knots. He clutched at his chest with one hand. The feeling that had washed over him the moment she spoke. Like jumping into a hot spring. Burning, but at the same time. He needed it. It was wrong what he had wanted. So wrong. That feeling, the urge he had to. Take her in his arms. And caress her neck with his lips. The bite down. He shivered just thinking about it. But it wasn't completely being scared. It was also longing. Now that he was away from her. Hinata's scent teased at him. What he wouldn't give to touch her again. For one second he had completely forgotten. Naruto realized his skin wasn't burning. The spots of sunlight coming through the leaves of the tree he was under did nothing to him. But at the same time he was more thirsty and hungry than ever. Naruto let his head thump back against the tree and thought, I'm so thirsty. I would kill for a good. Damn. Water doesn't help at all. His mind conjured up images of Hinata and he recalled her scent and her heartbeat. He couldn't understand why it excited him so much to remember that. He forced his thoughts out of that corner of his mind. I just have to wait for the others to get here. And then I'll pass this test he has for us. Once that's done. I guess I'll go back to my apartment. What do I do about this? This. He didn't know what to call it. Sickness. Condition. It was a puzzle and he was too hungry and thirsty and tired to solve it. Naruto held up his hand and pulled the glove off. His skin was irritated, but the light didn't seem to be hurting him. For the moment. He pulled the glove back on and waited. And waited. After a while he got up and began walking around. Come on. How early am I? I would rather have been late. His stomach was cramping up on him, but just sitting there twiddling his thumbs wasn't helping. Naruto turned as he heard a branch snap underfoot. He saw Sakura enter the clearing. He ducked out of sight. She walked out into the clearing, meandering. And not seeming to have a care in the world. Naruto picked up her scent a second later. It drifted to him on the light breeze. Strawberries and. Something else sweet. She smelled so good and it didn't cross his mind at all that he was alone. Until it did. Naruto realized that they were completely alone. Something clicked into place in his mind. Sakura was there and she. Looked so. He didn't know what she was. The word to describe the churning feeling in his gut. What was it? Sakura flopped, somewhat inelegantly, onto her back in the grass. He watched the rise and fall of her chest. His ears registered her humming a tune to herself. An image flashed through his mind. Sakura's slender neck. Her pulse in his ears. Red dripping from her throat. Naruto shook his head violently and clenched his fist. But the vision continued. Sakura sitting up, crimson. Gushing. Naruto slammed his fist into the tree he was standing next to. His muscles forcing his hand through the wood like it was paper. The tree imploded, sending branches and splinters of wood in every direction. From where Sakura was, she heard the impact and the groan of the wood shifting. Then the sound of the tree shattering like glass. Pieces of the tree had cut at him like tiny razors. Naruto didn't pay attention to it. Punching the tree hadn't helped. 
He growled and paced away from the stump. He saw Sakura out of the corner of his eye. She was looking at him with an expression close to shock. Naruto's eyes found her neck. So easy. It would be so easy too. He squeezed his eyes shut and turned his back to her mentally shouting at himself, I will not do that. I will not do that. I will know. A voice to his left asked, something wrong dope. Naruto's eyes snapped open and he looked to his left. Sasuke was standing there, hidden in the shadows of another tree. He looked cool and compassed. Naruto really wanted to wipe that smug condescending look of his face. Maybe then he could throw out the images still flooding his head. He at last answered Sasuke, none of your business Sasuke. There were many things he wanted right now, and none of them involved giving the stupid guy anything over him. Naruto walked past Sasuke to the stream that ran through training field 7. He sat at the water's edge and stared into the water. He ground his teeth in anger. This day was not going well. It was nearly half an hour before Kakashi found his way to the meeting place. What he found was a bit unnerving. Sakura was sitting in the middle of the grassy clearing. She was watching Naruto raptly. Sasuke was leaning against a tree, also watching Naruto out of the corner of his eye. Naruto was snoozing at the edge of the stream and he seemed to be. Well this is interesting. Naruto was spinning a kunai on his finger. But he must have been doing it for a while because his finger had started to bleed. Something tells me that this isn't going to be a fun test. Bakashi announced his presence with a well-used yo. Sakura and Sasuke both looked to him. Naruto stopped spinning the kunai but kept his eyes closed. Kakashi walked over till he was standing over Naruto. He asked, so. What's up with you Naruto? Not feeling well still. Naruto said, I'm fine. Can we get this test over with? Naruto opened his eyes. Kakashi felt a chill run up his spine. The boy's eyes were red. Not just in color, but in iridescent. Glowing red. Kakashi thought, okay. Calm down. This must be something to do with the Kaiubi. But what am I supposed to do? Naruto sat up and the red faded from his eyes. Kakashi let out a sigh of relief, I'll get this test over with, and then report to Lord Third immediately. Kakashi said, okay everyone. Gather around. Sakura and Sasuke left their places to come and hear him explain the test. Once they were all paying attention to him he began. So this is how it works. You three have until noon to take these. He motioned to two silver bells that hung on his belt. If you don't get a bell by noon you don't get lunch. Then after that you have until dark to get a bell. If you fail this test completely. Then you'll be back at the academy. Kakashi let his ominous word sink in. Sakura asked, but there are only two bells sensei. Naruto and Sasuke both narrowed their eyes. Kakashi said, that's right. All the more reason to get yours quick. Kakashi turned and walked ten paces away. He pulled out his book and let it fall open in his hand. Behind him the three gen intensed for action. Kakashi said, remember you three. If you don't come at me with the intent to kill. You'll never even touch one of these bells. He paused, okay. Start. Naruto saw Sakura and Sasuke dart into the trees to either side of him. He stayed right where he was as his mind worked over what Kakashi had said. Intent to kill. The words echoed in his mind and he thought, yeah. I can do that. Kakashi turned around and saw him standing there. His eye went wide. The Jonin was struck with the look that had come over Naruto. He looked. Coiled. Like a spring ready to snap to extension. There was a quality to his intense gaze, something like bloodlust. Kakashi sank into a crouch, worry of the boy. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Naruto grinned. It wasn't exactly a nice grin. Then he charged. Flashed would have been a better description. He blazed towards Kakashi hand outstretched. For his throat. Not his bells. He barely managed to twist out of the way as Naruto wet sailing past. Kakashi felt a tearing sensation around his chest. Naruto's other hand had swung out wide to catch him across the belly with his kunai. Kakashi jumped back and crouched low. He didn't know what had just happened. Naruto shouldn't have been able to move anywhere near that fast. And that look. Naruto whirled and landed in a crouch of his own. Naruto smelled the air. Something sweet. Like what you might imagine a metric ton of chocolate might smell like. The smell permeated the air. Naruto drank it in. This scent was too much. Like a perfume that he wanted to drink. He brought up his kunai. He had missed his target. He had meant to go lower and cut through Kakashi's belt. Making it rather hard for him to move while his pants were falling down. But he had jumped out of the way, and the blade had caught his stomach instead. Naruto's eyes fixed on the red dripping from Kakashi. It was making him dizzy just looking at it. He was incredibly tempted to taste his kunai's edge. Naruto bent down and switched the kunai to his other hand before attacking again. Kakashi was unsurprised this time by Naruto's attack, but the result wasn't as different as he would have liked. As Naruto dived past him he actually threw his kunai right at his chest. Twisting again he managed to get out of the way of the weapon again. 
He pulled out his own kunai and took the opportunity to put away his book. There was a jingle behind him and he felt something breeze past him. Bam they're working together Sasuke darted past him, one bell in hand. Momentarily distracted by the sneaky Ichiha, Kakashi took his attention away from Naruto. He had ricocheted off a tree in his path, sending himself back at his target. Kakashi made hand signs as quickly as he could. He smacked his hand on the ground, earth style, mobile core. A square patch of earth in front of Naruto shot into the air. Naruto slammed into it. Kakashi then made the hand signs for a fireball, but then he saw something out of the corner of his eye. I'm not fooling for that twice. Kakashi jumped in the air as Sakura flashed under him, her face turned upward. He smiled as she went sprawling. His feet touched down on top of the earth pillar he had created a moment before. He looked around quickly. He sweat dropped as he saw Naruto lining up a punch with the base of the earth pillar. Then the pillar disintegrated under him under Naruto's strike. Kakashi jumped off the falling column and landed a few feet away. Sakura was already on top of him. He easily sidestepped her kunai and chopped down on the top of her head with his hand. She didn't quite drop, but she stopped moving for a second. Sakura jumped out of the way of his next attack and Sakashi turned just in time to block Naruto's punch, but it still sent him back a foot, his feet sliding over the damp grass. Next Naruto kicked for his crotch, not so fast Naruto. Kakashi raised a knee to block the kick as he punched out at Naruto's face. Naruto took the punch like a brick wall and grabbed his wrist. Kakashi noted that Naruto's fighting style was rough and brutish, but effective. Then Naruto slammed his head forward. His forehead rammed home in Kakashi's chest. It knocked his breath out and sent him backwards. Naruto sacrificed any balance by bringing up his other leg to kick his side with enough force to break bone. Then gravity asserted itself again and Naruto fell backward, still holding onto his wrist. Kakashi brought his hand down across Naruto's fingers, but he didn't let go. He was being pulled forward on top of Naruto. Kakashi did a front flip over Naruto. He dodged Sakura's second sneak attack in the process and forced Naruto to his feet behind him. Kakashi kicked out and broke Naruto's hold on him. Pain snapped into Naruto's spine as Kakashi buried his foot in his lower back. He let go of Kakashi's wrist, mainly because he already had three shuriken in his other hand. As he let go of Kakashi, he used the momentum to spin his body around, launching the sharp throwing stars right at Kakashi. At the point-blank range, the jonin had little room to dodge. Kakashi still managed to deflect two of them, but the third graze passed his head. The razor edge of the projectile cut through the band on his forehead protector. The metal plate hiding his other eye fell away. Naruto lost his balance after that and tumbled right into Sakura, who was getting up from her failed attack. They both sprawled in the grass. The two of them roll, Sakura coming up on top. Naruto grimaced as his back twinged in pain. He looked up at Sakura who was busy trying not to stab him with her kunai which was between them. Sasuke watched the three of them fighting. Naruto's almost random attack strategy was surprisingly effective against Kakashi. Sasu kept that in mind for the time when he might have to fight Kakashi alone. Then he saw Naruto whirl, flinging a handful of shuriken in Kakashi's face. The experienced Jonin managed to deflect two even at that close range. A third severed his eye patch forehead protector. Then his momentum pushed him into Sakura, who quickly turned her kunai vertical to avoid impaling him. They tumbled in the grass as Kakashi regained his balance. Sakura hurriedly got off Naruto who sat up, obviously in pain. From where he was hiding it looked like Naruto had taken a bad hit. Something occurred to him as he watched the two struggle to take down Kakashi. Something is strange about this whole test. Two bells. Three students. There would be no chance that the three students would work together. Sakura is only helping Naruto right now because she might get a chance at the remaining bell again. Wait. This test must be designed to test our instinct to go it alone. We only really stand a chance of getting a bell at all. If we work together. I might have had a small chance of taking Kakashi on by myself, as long as I was fast and didn't give him the chance to get serious. Damn. This is a test of teamwork. That's why he said we would all fail. If we can't work as a team now then he won't bother training us. Kakashi watched Naruto and Sakura catch their bearing. They sure were making trouble for him. If they actually coordinated their attacks he might have to use his Sharingan. Sakura got off Naruto and they stood up. He didn't bother brushing himself off. He glared at his sensei. The look wasn't a nice one. Naruto glanced at Sakura. He seemed to be thinking hard. Then he took a step towards her and whispered in her ear. Sakura went still to listen. Then slowly she nodded her head. Naruto looked back at him, and Kakashi got an uneasy feeling in his gut. Which as it happened, was still bleeding profusely. Sakura put away her kunai and drew out a small stack of shuriken from her tool bag. Then Naruto dashed at him again. He activated his Sharingan and held his ground. Naruto was almost on top of him when he used his shadow clone jutsu. Two clones appeared on either side of him and dived past Kakashi. 
At the same time Sakura began launching shuriken at him. Kakashi realized that something was wrong. Naruto had just stopped in his tracks and was standing there at the ready. Kakashi's Sharingan showed him Naruto's eye was looking over his shoulder. And the way Sakura was aiming her shuriken. They would go right past him. Kakashi whirled in time to dodge the first two shuriken that had been redirected by the clones behind him. The next two buried themselves in his chest. Not very deep wounds but painful. He quickly dashed at the clones. A second later they poofed out of existence and he turned back around, just in the nick of time too. Naruto's fingers were centimeters from the remaining bell. He turned, keeping the bell out of reach as he brought his hand down to chop at his unprotected neck. The shuriken whizzed past his face, cleanly slicing the very tip of his nose. Kakashi missed Naruto's neck. Instead his blow landed across his shoulder. He blocked the next incoming shuriken, catching the last one and flinging it back. Sakura dodged it, but it seemed she was out of throwing weapons now. Kakashi turned his attention back to Naruto, but discovered that he had dodged out of reach. Kakashi's eyes narrowed. Naruto was grinning again. Suddenly Kakashi felt an enormous heat at his back. He made a move to escape to his left. He made it, just enough to avoid being blasted by Sasuke's fireball jutsu. He didn't know where that had come from. Kakashi belatedly realized that all three were now working against him together. Well, they passed at least. Kakashi shouted, enough you guys. Everybody stop. Sakura who had been darting forward to attack halted. Naruto stopped mid-jutsu, and Sasuke relaxed his muscles. Sakura asked, what is it sensei? Kakashi smiled, thought they couldn't see it, all three of you passed. With flying colors I might add. Naruto's jaw fell open, what? We passed, but neither me or Sakura got a bell. He looked dumbstruck. Kakashi said, listen Naruto. This whole test was designed to test how well you work together. Right Sasuke. The Ichiha nodded, I figured it out just a few moments ago. Otherwise I would have stayed out of the fight. Kakashi said, see he figured out that if he didn't work towards the common goal with you, then he would fail, even though he got the bell. It's not the perfect solution. Ideally he would have wanted to help his teammates out regardless, but it's the fact that you can work as a team that counts. Naruto sighed and dropped on his butt. He growled, thanks a lot sensei. I already wasn't feeling good. Now I feel stupid on top of awful. Sakura slumped too. She thought, I can't believe I didn't think of that. I was fooled just like Naruto. There was silence as the three kids digested the information. Sakura asked, so if we pass the test. Then can we officially call ourselves Squad 7? Kakashi said, of course. That's obvious. This was your last test. Most of the other team leaders had their own tests for their squads. Mine is just not as obvious. Sakura asked, so. Can we eat now? I worked up an appetite. Kakashi nodded and he said, just this way for lunch. Sasuke and Sakura followed Kakashi, and after a moment so did Naruto. Kakashi watched his three fellow squad members. They had certainly given him a beating. Not a serious one, but more than any genin. Or three genin had ever given him. Currently Sasuke and Sakura were eating. Both of them silent, but Sakura would glance at Sasuke every now and then. Kakashi looked at Naruto. He hasn't even touched his food. And I know that isn't like him. Aruka told me that he's a ravenous eater. A bottomless pit, but he hasn't eaten a bite. What's up with him? He asked, Naruto, is something actually wrong? You haven't so much as moved since you sat down, much less start eating. Naruto sighed painfully, it's just. I haven't been able to eat anything since I woke up. Tried eating this morning before I came, but. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting sick. That worried Kakashi. Most shinobi rarely got sick unless it somehow affected their chakra network as well. And Naruto was, at least as far as he knew, healthier than most genin. For Naruto not to be eating. He must have been feeling bad. Kakashi moved over to sit next to him. He asked, what exactly are you feeling? Tell me so I can take you by the hospital. Can't have you sick before the first mission. Naruto said, I don't know everything feels bad. Mountain stomach hurts, my eyes hurt, I'm all itchy from the light. He moved his hands to rub at his face. And my ears are messed up. I keep hearing things. And it the same with my nose. From where she was sitting Sakura asked, what do you mean by hearing things? Naruto looked pointedly away from her. He gulped, it's. Kinda like a beat. Like a heartbeat. And it's been off and on since I left the apartment. Kakashi asked, so where is this heartbeat sound coming from? He immediately regretted asking that. Naruto pointed at each one of them in turn. Sakura's eyes were wide. She said, that's creepy Naruto. No way you could hear my heartbeat. I'm 10 feet from you. Kakashi asked, what about your nose? Naruto wiped his nose with one gloved hand. Then wrinkled it. He said, I smell something sweet. But. I don't know what it is. And I can't get the smell out even with this lunch. Kakashi said, about that. 
Are you not eating because you're nauseous? Naruto shook his head, I don't know. Okay. I tried eating this morning. Raymond. The same thing I eat every morning, but it tasted awful. And I know that I won't be able to eat this. I just. I'm hungry, but I can't eat. To Kakashi it sounded like the symptoms were all jumbled together. He had never heard of any sickness like that. It sure wasn't a fever or the common cold. Naruto felt horrible, but at the same time his mind was screaming at him. He couldn't think straight and it was giving him a headache. Kakashi said something to him, but he didn't catch it. He moved his hands to his head. The pressure was getting worse. And his teeth. They felt like they were. Pulsing. Like a toothache but different. The pressure in his head was starting to feel like a migraine. Naruto felt like. His head was splitting open. And it was getting worse still. Worse than that his skin was starting to burn. Kakashi saw him bring his hands to his head and grit his teeth in pain. He asked, Naruto. Naruto are you alright Naruto? Naruto pressed his hands to his temple as his eyes squeezed shut. Sakura and Sasuke both looked on, concerned for their teammate. Sasuke asked, Kakashi. What's happening to him? The silver-haired Jonin didn't know. He had no clue what was happening. He grabbed Naruto and threw him over his shoulder. He said, you two come on. I'm taking him to the hospital. Two days later. The third Hokage stood with Kakashi in the hospital. They were watching a sleeping Naruto. He was sweating and he tossed in his sleep. The nurses had been unable to do anything for him. All they could say for certain was that his body was going through a change. What it was or how it worked. None of them knew. The day before they had given up on figuring out what kind of sickness he had caught. Instead they had focused on relieving pain. According to the head medical ninja, a woman called Akana, Naruto's chakra network, was being assaulted by his own body. She explained that because of the agitation, his chakra points were all fully open at the same time, allowing a massive amount of chakra to be gathered. The problem was that his body refused to stop harming itself. Naruto's body had rejected all forms of food. They were reduced to injecting what he needed directly into him through an IV. Naruto's nervous system was also in shock, which no one could explain. To top all of that of he seemed to be having some sort of sensory change. The nurse who had first seen to him confirmed what he had mentioned. His sense of hearing had been magnified. They still didn't have any clue to why that happened. The Hokage said, this isn't good. We have no way of determining what will happen to him at this point. I myself am unsure whether he will pull through this. He turned to Kakashi, are you sure you saw no sign or clue as to what caused this sudden change? Kakashi said, I talked with his teacher and some of his classmates from the academy. From what I've heard he wasn't acting normally, even the first time I met him. Old man Suratobi sighed, I was afraid of that. And unfortunately because Naruto has always been alone and elusive. It is unlikely that anyone knows what caused this or when it started. Just as he finished speaking, the door behind them opened and two people entered the room. It was Sakura, escorting a very agitated Hinata. Kakashi and the Hokage stepped aside as the two girls went to the side of Naruto's bed. Sakura walked over and checked Naruto's temperature. She had become quite the nurse in the past two days. Kakashi noted the bags under her eyes. She had taken personal interest in making sure he was comfortable during the times he had woken up. Kakashi looked to Hinata. She was pale and shy. Her large lavender eyes were very sad, and she held flowers in her hand. Kakashi glanced to the third. The old man had a sad smile on his lips. He muttered, at least he has friends to care for him. The old man turned and left the room. Kakashi continued watching the two girls fuss over Naruto as he slept. After a few minutes he heard the door open again, and Sasuke walked in. He stood by Kakashi and watched. A minute or so later he asked, how is it going? Did they figure out what's wrong with him yet? He shook his head. No we still don't have a clue. From the bed Sakura said, sensei. His temperature is going down. He might wake up. Kakashi started forward. Sasuke stayed back. Hinata's cheeks began to turn pink as she stood at the foot of the bed. In bed, Naruto shifted. All three of them leaned over the bed to see. Naruto opened his eyes. But even before that his thirst hit him hard. It was like a physical pain being this thirsty. His nose picked up that maddeningly sweet scent as he looked around the room. It was too bright. He moved a hand to cover his eyes. He groaned. Shut. The. Window. Please. Sakura rushed to close the drapes. Once that was done Naruto let his arm fall from his eyes. His eyelids were still so heavy. It was hard to stay awake, but sleeping didn't seem like a good idea. He forced himself to sit up, quickly realizing that it was not going to work, he plopped back down. Pain exploded in his head, but he was too weak to express it with a shout or a scream. Instead he groaned. His mouth was so. Dry. And that damn smell. It made him wish he had a glass of. Whatever it was. Right in front of him. He blinked and looked at the people around him. He saw Sasuke first, hanging back in the shadows. 
Then both Sakura and Kakashi who were hovering over him, their expressions concerned. At last he saw Hinata, trying to hide her face behind the flowers she was holding. She lowered the flowers and he saw her pale eyes and bright blush. A thought entered his mind, cutting through his headache. I like her. It was the kind of instant thought. Baron gone, but he managed to put on his signature foxy grin. Everyone, excluding Sasuke, smiled back. Sakura asked, how are you feeling? Naruto croaked, eyed. Kill for some. Water. Kakashi found a pitcher and poured into a paper cup. Then he handed it to Naruto, who took it gratefully. Naruto brought it to his lips and drank. Almost as soon as the water reached his throat, it started burning, like whiskey instead of water. Naruto coughed and felt a shiver run the length of his body. He promptly dropped the cup of water. It was ten minutes before the pain in his throat went away and he was able to relax. Naruto laid back on a heap of pillows. He thought out loud, what? What is that smell? It's here too. I don't know. It makes me even thirstier. Hinata leaned forward, Naruto kun. Is there anything you need? I I could stop by your apartment if you needed something. He shook his head. While they sat there a nurse entered and pulled out a syringe. She said, we need to take a blood sample okay. Naruto did his best to shrug. He said, whatever. The nurse cleansed a spot on his arm and inserted the needle. Then she drew back the plunger, drawing out a vial of red liquid. Then she removed the needle and left. Naruto's nose twitched. He realized something, that sweet smell. It's blood. I'm smelling blood. As the thought rolled through his mind he could almost. No dot he could hear the blood. It was inside the people around him. It was rushing, shooting through them. Naruto felt a cold drop on his arm, where the nurse had extracted his blood. He reached a finger over and captured the drop on his finger. He brought the drop in front of his eyes and watched as it trailed down his hand. The others watched him do it. They all were silent. Then Naruto spoke. He said, hey guys. Could you leave for a little bit? I need to talk. To sensei. Without hesitation everyone left besides Kakashi. After a few moments Naruto sat up. He said, I know. It sounds crazy. But I think. I think that I need blood. Kakashi looked puzzled, what do you mean? You're not suffering from blood loss. What do? Naruto cut in, to drink. His hand grabbed Kakashi's wrist and squeezed. The older man winced at the strength. Naruto growled, I need. He released Kakashi's wrist and looked away. Kakashi heard him mumble quietly, please. Kakashi left the room. Naruto watched him go. His heart was pounding, just the thought of. Blood. It was making him shiver. With pleasure. An overwhelming feeling of anticipation settled over him. He didn't care if it was wrong. He was too thirsty for that. Far too thirsty. If it would only not hurt. If he could drink it without choking. That would be worth it. As he waited his expectation grew. The longer it took the more he wanted it. His teeth. Pulsed like his heart. Bakashi returned with three blood packs in hand. He set them on the bed. Naruto picked one up and turned it around in his hands. It was a blood pack, sealed tight with plastic. He attempted to tear open a corner, but something stopped him. Hesitantly. Slowly he placed his mouth over the corner of the bag and bit down. His teeth pierced the bag and blood flowed into his mouth. The flavor. The sensation. The warmth. Heat spread out over his body as he drank. He closed his eyes and squeezed the blood pack. It was better than anything he'd ever tasted. Far better than Raymond. Far better than. He finished the first blood pack and his hand shot out to grab the second one, faster than the eye could follow. He drained it in a matter of seconds and he was on the third one. It was so. Good. Like sweet and warm and. Naruto's cheeks reddened in pure pleasure. His headache. Gone. The cramps. Disappeared. His hunger. Fading. His whole body felt fresh and new. As he licked the last precious drops from the blood pack, he slowly, almost in slow motion fell back onto the bed. He. Was so sleepy. Naruto closed his eyes and was out. Bakashi watched Naruto drink all three blood packs. Each pack had been about 18 fluid ounces. Naruto had just consumed four and a half sodas worth of blood. The sheer hunger that had absorbed Naruto for a few minutes was gone, replaced with peaceful slumber. There was no trace of the pain that had been apparent before. Naruto looked. Almost happy. Except for the red that coated his lips. Then as Kakashi watched, his tongue darted out and licked his lip. Naruto shifted then, rolling onto his side. Bakashi stood up. He needed to report this to the Hokage. He left immediately. Anada saw Kakashi leave the room. She stood up and walked inside. Naruto was there in bed sleeping. He seemed to calm and relax now. She didn't know what Kakashi had done but it worked. Hinata stood over the bed. Naruto looked so handsome to her. And his cute whisker marks as well. He always worked so hard and he never gave in. She thought that it was the best thing ever. Then she noticed that his mouth was open slightly. She bent down to look closer. Her breath hitched. 
There were two. Fangs, much longer than they should have been. They were sharp and. Kinda cute. Hinata smiled slightly. Naruto opened his eyes. She leapt back, then feeling self-conscious, she stepped back to the side of the bed. Naruto sat up as she came in close. His amazing blue eyes were focused on her. His lips were slightly parted and he. He was smelling the air. Naruto said, hey Hinata. She blushed red. Just him looking at her like that. It made her feel all warm. Naruto reached out, his hand catching a hold of her jacket. He pulled her closer. His heartbeat sped up. And he could hear hers do the same. She smelled, incredible. Naruto imagined what she could taste like. Her blood pumping through her, like sweet nectar. His throat was suddenly dry. He was thirsty. She was right there. She was standing with her hands clasped in front of her, looking so innocent. His gaze settled on her neck. Her porcelain skin, so soft. Hinata. Come closer. He needed her closer. Hinata stepped closer. The gentle tugging on her jacket didn't stop. Naruto seemed so desperate, his breath coming hard now. She leaned over the side of the bed. Hinata asked, Naruto-kun. I is there anything? You dot need. Hinata was close enough that he could touch her face. His thirst was taking over. It was so easy. Just tell her to come closer, and then he could bite into that beautiful neck. Drink from the lifeblood that would gush from her. No. Naruto grabbed Hinata by the front of her jacket. He growled, you have to get away from me. I'm not safe. Go. He released her as a shudder snapped through him. She backed away from the bed. Naruto's eyes were red. They were glowing. He panted, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Then he stopped. He went completely still for a minute. Then his face turned to her. Hinata ran. Bakashi barely arrived back at Naruto's room in the hospital to see him open his door. He stepped through. Behind him the third Hokage kept pace. They both stopped when they saw him. His red eyes, his heavy breathing, the prominent fangs. Even the way he stood, it all screamed bloodlust. The fight to bring Naruto down was short. The struggle to properly restrain him required a lot more effort. Eventually they had to inject him with an extremely powerful sedative. And even that only kept him weak. He was still wide awake. Kakashi and the medical staff marveled at his ability to stay conscious under all the drugs. For the moment though, they were safe. One week later. Kakashi made his way to the hospital. The head medical nin had insisted that Naruto have no contact with anyone other than the hospital staff. They had been running non-stop tests since about five days ago. Okana made sure they knew how he was, but today was the first day the squad would be allowed to see him since the incident with Hinata. In fact Hinata was with them today. She had been with them nearly constantly for the past few days. Kakashi was starting to wonder what the deal was with her. She seemed to care for Naruto far more than she should have. From what Sakura said, Hinata didn't have any more friends than Naruto. She was extremely shy and very polite. She wasn't what he would have expected from a Hayuga. Most Hayuga he had met over the years were proud and aristocratic. And lately those he knew within the clan had developed an arrogance. It was surprising that such an introverted girl had survived in the Hayuga clan, especially since she was the heir to the main branch. Squad 7 along with Hinata stepped into the hospital room where Naruto had been moved to. He had a medical ninja who stood silent behind the bed. Naruto was not restrained at the moment. He was free to move, but the heavy sedatives meant that he lacked the strength to fight anyone. He was sitting up in bed as they entered. He looked. Haggard, though clean and groomed, his face displayed his misery. The four of them approached the bed. He didn't look up, but he spoke to them anyway, hey guys. Sakura approached till she was standing at the foot of the bed. She asked, how are you feeling Naruto? He turned his head and gestured to the medical nin behind him. He said, I feel great. I even have my own personal guard. Except he's protecting everyone else. Sakura gulped and looked up at the man stationed behind the bed. She asked him, hey. Do you know what's wrong with him yet? The man shook his head. He had short brown hair and a thin scar running down the side of his face. He said, Naruto has some kind of condition. The symptoms seem to change hour to hour, but the ones that are most common seem to be heightened senses. Strength. Speed. And a thirst for human blood. The room went still. Naruto chucked, you know. I thought it was horrible at first too. But now. It's like I'm addicted or something. Kakashi stepped forward as well. He asked, so have you figured out why he's craving it? Is there some deficiency that drinking blood helps? The man shook his head no. He said, as far as we can tell he has nothing wrong with him, but he goes through violent withdrawal if he doesn't drink at least four or five times a day. Sakura gulped, four or dot five times a day. How much is that? She didn't really want to know, but a kind of morbid curiosity made her ask. The guard thought for a moment. Well that's about three blood packs per sitting at 18 fluid ounces each. Approximately. One. Six liters. And the average person has about five. Five liters of blood. 
and he's easily drinking that much. The guard shrugged, if it wasn't so unnerving I might make a joke about where he puts it all. But. They stopped talking at the looks on their faces. Sasuke was even paler than usual. He asked, how is it possible for him to consume that much blood on a daily basis? Naruto answered that, well other food tastes bad now so. I don't eat or drink anything else. Plus. With. The um. Way blood tastes. Kakashi asked, you enjoy the taste of blood. Naruto cringed away from him saying, it's not what it sounds like. It doesn't taste like it should. Sasuke asked, what do you mean? Naruto looked up at them, it's like drinking sugar water. Almost. But thicker and. Better. I guess. Naruto smelled the air as he spoke. He was getting thirsty again. Over the past few days he'd become attuned to what his body told him. He turned to the guard behind him. He said, hey um. Takata was it. Could you tell her that I'm thirsty again. And I can feel the drug wearing off. Takato grimaced, the new set of sedatives wore off that quickly damn. I'll be right back. The guard hurriedly left the room. Kakashi asked, new sedatives. Naruto didn't know how to explain it. They just didn't work very well on him. The hospital staff had been through more than a dozen drugs so far, in an effort to keep him weakened. He said, some kind of heavy tranquilizer. Can't pronounce it you know. He scratched the back of his head nervously. Kakashi was about to ask him about his other symptoms when Akana came in with a large tray. On it was a series of syringes and three pack of blood. Naruto looked sourly at the needles. He asked, come on. Do you have to stab me every time? I mean don't you have like some kind of pill or something? Akana shook her head. She was tall with short blonde hair. Her intelligent green eyes hid behind narrow glasses. Though she wasn't a ninja, she was the foremost expert on everything healing. She said, I'm sorry Naruto. But your body has built up resistances to all but the strongest of sedatives. I doubt that even sedafine would do much more than make you drowsy, and that's the strongest non-damaging sedative we have. Any more powerful and we risk hurting you? Kakashi asked, then how are you going to keep him? Safe he didn't like the idea of having to deal with a berserk Naruto again. It was almost more than he could handle alone. She bowed her head as she placed the tray on the bedside. She said, by my calculations. We have enough new sedatives to keep him in this state for a week more. After that we will be forced to physically restrain him in the event of problems. Naruto grinned looking up at her, sorry about that. Can I eat now? She nodded mutely. Naruto picked up the first blood pack and bit into the corner. Everyone watched as he sucked the blood out of it. Sakura and Sasuke were slack-jawed, and Hinata's eyes were bugged out. Naruto closed his eyes, savoring the flavor. His breath heart rate spiked as shown on a display near the wall. It started beeping and everyone looked at it. Okana said, it's normal. It happens every time he drinks. We aren't exactly sure why, but Takato spends a lot of time with Naruto. He thinks that it's just because he enjoys it so much. Naruto finished the first pack and snatched the second. His eyes opened for a second as his fangs sang into it. They were red. Bright arterial red. Sakura took several steps back from the bed. As they watched, Akana took out a scanner and pressed it against Naruto's neck. He stiffened and let go of the pack. Akana's eyes grew wide and she withdrew the scanner. Kakashi asked, what's that? Akana took a moment to write something down in her ever-present notepad before replying. She said, it's a new bit of technology that the village stole from the Hidden Mist village. It shows the output of chakra through a person's body. It only gives a rough estimate though, so it's only safe to use with large changes. The point of it is, whenever he drinks blood, his chakra immediately spikes. Naruto went back to drinking from the packet. He looked at them as he drank. His expression was almost apologetic. Bakashi asked Akana, do you have any predictions at all concerning him? Any. Regardless of what they're about. She said, yes I have a few. And? She took out her notebook and flipped through it. Then she said, from what we have observed, he has become both physically and mentally addicted to blood. So my prediction is that at some point he will be forced to start feeding on living people. Hinata let out a little scream and Sakura asked, what do you mean by living people? Akana explained, normal food has become almost harmful to him. He can eat it and as far as we know. Survive of it, but it would not be pleasant. Naruto piped up as he finished the second bag. He said, I can eat normal food as long as I already drank before that. When old man third brought me ramen the other day it didn't taste bad. But water. Naruto almost gagged at the thought of it. Okana said, he can't even drink water at the moment. His body rejects it. So. But the rate which he consumes blood on a daily basis, we don't have the capacity to keep him fed forever. And other people need blood too for valid medical reasons. Sakura said, so what you're telling us is that Naruto will have to kill someone almost every day just to survive. Akana put her hands up in the air, hold it. Hold it. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that a solution needs to be found. 
One of the other nurses had an idea that there could be someone who stays close to Naruto who he is able to get blood from. Not a lot, but enough to get by. We could set up a system where we put aside a fraction of all the blood we get for him. As is. The only other way to look at it is. Killing to eat. Naruto gritted his teeth. He growled, I won't kill just to drink. There has to be another way. And I don't want someone to have to give me their blood either. If. If I have to fight an enemy and they die. I guess then it's okay. But otherwise. Kakashi took the time to think of a solution. Eventually he spoke up, Naruto. How much blood do you have to drink before you can eat normal food? Naruto said, I don't know. Other day that I had ramen. I had just had like four blood packs. Kakashi turned to Sasuke. He said, go to the lounge room in this building and get some food. We need to see if he can eat normally with just two packs of blood. Sasuke nodded and left. Akana asked, what are you thinking Kakashi? He said, well if he can eat after only two packs, then that cuts the amount of blood he needs a day in half. Akana said, but there is no way to verify that normal food is even doing anything for him at this point. If his body rejects normal water like it does, how do we know that he can even digest regular food? Bakashi and Akana talked back and forth as Naruto grabbed the third blood pack and drank it. He could feel it. His strength was coming back. He flexed his arm muscles. The sound of Kakashi and Akana arguing grew louder. Naruto assumed that his hearing was getting keener as well. Naruto sniffed the air. His heart started to pound in his ears. He turned his head slightly and breath in. The smell of Hinata, Sakura, Kakashi, and Akana rushed in. He breathed out. So thirsty. Why am I still so thirsty? Must be the drugs wearing off. Naruto felt like he was in slow motion. Kakashi and Akana stopped talking as Hinata squeaked, Naruto. They looked at the boy. He was breathing hard and he was mumbling to himself. Akana cursed silently and quickly stepped to where she had put the tray with a new set of sedatives. She readied the first one and turned to Naruto. His jaw clenched as she took his arm. She put the needle at his skin and pushed. The needle bent and snapped, the broken edge scraping across Naruto's skin. She dropped the syringe in surprise. She thought the needle broke on his skin. Impossible. His skin isn't that tough. Then Naruto was looking at her. He looked sad, in a soon-to-be-satisfied sort of way. But before he could grab her by the throat, there was a small shout, and Naruto felt two arms wrap around him and a headrest on his chest, just under his chin. Shocked out of his thirst, he looked down. He asked, Hinata. What are you? She said into his chest, please Naruto come. Don't do that okay. Just let her use the sedatives. His breath hitched. She was so close. Her skin. Her hair. It all made him so thirsty. He completely forgot about Akana as he smelled her. Naruto closed his eyes and shivered. Then cold steel stabbed into his throat. He choked as Akana depressed the plunger on the syringe. His eyes snapped open as a cold sensation ran through him. The sedative quickly drained the strength from his limbs. A moment later he fell back into his pillow. It was like his whole body had fallen asleep on him. He couldn't move a muscle. He felt Hinata slip off of him. She took a seat in a nearby chair. After a minute had passed Kakashi was able to speak, that was very foolish Hinata. Thank you. She made no answer. Naruto saw her out of the corner of his eye. She was bright red. Her face and even her neck. She was looking in her law as her fingers pressed together. Naruto heard Sakura say, Hinata this is just like you. Whenever you're around Naruto you get all red. What is with you doing that anyway? He could have easily bitten you. Kakashi said, that's enough Sakura. I think she understands that she took a risk. And fortunately it paid off. Right Naruto. Kakashi leaned over the bed to look at him. He asked, were you about to bite Hinata? Naruto mustered enough strength to nod. Sakura sighed loudly and Akana said, thank you for intervening. He probably would have bitten me were it not for you. Now let's do the second shot. She leaned over the bed and injected the last needle into his neck. Naruto felt his muscles loosen and he twisted his neck. Sasuke arrived back in the room. He had grabbed what he could. This place didn't have a lot that a picky eater like Naruto would enjoy, but there was Raymond in abundance. As far as he knew Raymond was one of Naruto's top 10 favorite things. Weirdo. Being addicted to Raymond and now blood. He just keeps getting stranger by the week. The room was different than how he had left it. Hinata was red as an apple, sitting in a corner. Naruto was laid out flat on the bed, and the two adults were talking quietly out of hearing range. Sasuke walked up and placed the food by the bed. As he did, Naruto forced himself into a sitting position. Naruto said, thanks Sasuke. Then he grabbed the cup of Raymond. Three days later. The Kado watched the two of them sleeping. Naruto was sleeping soundly, stretched out on the bed. Then the girl. Hinata had her head on the edge of the bed. She had fallen into a doze about 30 minutes before. He admired her devotion. She had spent more time visiting Naruto than anyone. Even the doctors and nurses weren't there as long. 
From how she acted, he guessed that she was infatuated with Naruto, but the blonde obviously didn't know it. Naruto was a puzzle to him. When he had first been told that he was to guard Naruto Uzumaki, he had been pissed. It was well known by the older generation that Naruto was the Ninetales vessel. And as far as he had been concerned, Naruto was no different from the Kaiubi. But after a few days of watching him and talking on occasion, he had been forced to reevaluate him. Naruto was a massive puzzle. On one end he was clueless about many things that the average shinobi took for granted. And yet on the other side of the coin, he was able to think of things in surprising new ways. He was kind and smart. Though defiantly not observant. If he had half a brain he would have realized why Hinata had been here for most of the past two days. The thing that made Takato scratch his head was how it seemed like Naruto was completely guileless. As though he didn't have the capacity to hurt someone on purpose. Yet he wasn't innocent. He knew full well how things worked in the shinobi world. He was left wondering how Naruto must feel. Must have been damn confusing to be in his situation. Naruto stirred and opened his eyes. As soon as he smelled the air, he knew Hinata was close by. She smelled so good. He wanted to run his hands through her hair and bury his face in the crook of her neck. Naruto sighed and blinked. He sat up and saw Hinata was sleeping at the side of the bed. She had her head on her arms and there was a book and a couple scrolls open beside her. Naruto looked around. He couldn't smell Takato close by. I wonder where Takato went. Probably to the restroom. Hmm. What was Hinata writing? He leaned forward and glanced over the papers that surrounded her. Picking up a small booklet he flipped through it. Seeing dates and times he realized it was her diary. He dropped it like a hot iron. After a moment of thought he realized that she would wake up and see that it wasn't on the right page. Naruto gulped and placed the little book open in front of her where it had originally been. He then laid back and closed his eyes. At least he wasn't thirsty. With Takato absent at the moment it would have been way too easy to bite Hinata. Naruto caught a strong blast of her scent at the same time as she shifted. He felt her move and then yawn. He thought, her yawns are so cute. They're almost silent. And the way she's always blushing and fidgeting. Naruto heard a short squeak from Hinata, followed by frantic shuffling noises. Then there was a hand on his shoulder. Hinata asked, um. Naruto. Kun. Did anyone. Come in. While I was sleeping. Naruto opened his eyes saying, don't know yawn I was asleep. Hinata nodded. Her face was flushed red and her eyes were glued to him. She asked, did. You. Um. Look in my. Never mind. She looked away and sat back down. Naruto sat up again and saw her closing her little booklet. Curiosity got the better of him. He asked, is there anything in there about me? The second he said the words, he realized that it would give him away. Hinata's eyes widened and her neck turned crimson. She looked at him, frozen for a moment before fainting. Naruto face palmed. He leaned forward and shook her shoulder. She didn't wake up. He poked and prodded at her, but she still remained unresponsive. Getting a bit desperate he reached out and pushed his finger into the pressure point on the back of her neck. She jolted up straight. He snatched his hand back. He said, sorry. I was trying to wake you up. She looked at him. He added, I only glanced at the book, really, I wasn't trying to peek. Hinata slumped and rested her head on the bed. She seemed both happy and disappointed. Naruto asked, are you okay Hinata? She nodded, but still didn't seem alright. Eventually he asked, are you sure you're alright? She said, yes. Naruto I'm dot alright. I just. It's like. It's just what. Naruto didn't know what was making her so flustered, but she looked like she was going to faint again. She said, it's just. I wanted to. To tell. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Tell what? You mean to me? Hinata nodded again. It's just. I I Naruto asked, have you thought of writing it down? Hinata seemed to freeze again. But after a moment she took out a pencil and tore a page from her diary. She began to write. Slowly. Precisely. When she finished she looked at the words for a long time. He thought that she had written a lot or was checking her spelling, but he realized that she was just nervous. Her face registering worry and indecision. Hesitantly she picked up the note and handed it to him. Her eyes were wide and it seemed like she was preparing herself for bad news. Naruto read the note. Then he read it again. Several more times and he had burned it into his mind. Written in Hinata's tidy scrawl was, I love you Naruto. He felt his breath hitch and he blinked. For a moment all he could manage was thanks. Too many things were going around inside his head. The words and all the implications were making him dizzy in a happy sort of way. Hinata, terrified to hear his response got up to leave, but felt him grab her arm. She turned only to be dragged into a bear hug. Her heart rate tripled as he hugged her. His strong arms encircled her and his pulse beat in her own ears. He said quietly, thank you Hinata. I always wanted someone to tell me that. He held her at arm's length and stared into her wide lavender eyes. He said, I know it's a but sudden. But would you be my girlfriend? Hinata couldn't speak. 
she nodded and tried not to cry. Naruto drew her into another hug, and he breathed in her scent as he rested his head next to hers. The Kata returned to the room to find Hinata on the bed. He blinked in surprise. She was curled up next to Naruto with her head resting on his chest. There was a smile on her lips. Naruto even had a hand resting easily over her shoulders. Takato decided not to disturb them. He took his place behind the bed and watched. Black hair. Pale skin. An impression of evil. Like a malevolent fog he sat there hunched. The shadows seemed to cling to him. The darkness didn't flinch as he lit a solitary candle. The man spoke, a dark sibilant voice. How is the plan progressing? He answered, according to my calculations. He should already be prime. It's only a matter of time now. However. The man shifted forward, however what? However, if our plan was going at the pace we predicted. Then something must be seriously wrong. I haven't heard any rumors or stirring that sound like things are going as I thought they would. I don't care about that. The man leaned forward, go there yourself and make sure the plan is progressing as it should. Be back in a month and the news better be good. Or I'll have your head. Naruto stretched mightily. He smelled the fresh air and grinned. Behind him Sakura shouted, Naruto this is no time to be relaxing. We're supposed to be testing you to see if you're fit for combat yet. Naruto turned around, yeah I know. Just give me a sec okay. I haven't been out of the hospital for a while. The Kashi who was standing with Sasuke behind Sakura said, that's fine Naruto, just don't get too distracted. You're not home free yet. Beside Naruto Hinata said, do your best. Naruto-kun. He nodded, I will Hinata. The five of them set off for training field 7. Unknown to Naruto there were three medical ninjas already there in hiding. They were there to observe him and to provide emergency support. If they thought that something was going wrong in relation to his condition. They would immediately sedate him. The Kana and the third Hokage had decided this test should happen before Naruto became immune to all the drugs they had. Walking through the village Naruto couldn't help but stop and look around. He stopped by Ichiraku Raymond and said hello to A.M. and her old man. They were pleasantly surprised to see him, but Naruto couldn't stay long. Sakura had him firmly by the ear and was being rather insistent. They were soon out of the village and heading towards the training ground. Naruto walked out in front with Hinata. She walked just slightly behind and beside him, constantly shooting looks at him. Sakura walked behind the both of them. She eyed Hinata suspiciously. Ever since just after the incident where he almost bit her and the head nurse, they had been awfully close. And the shy girl was always trying to stay close to him, doing her best to be around him. And she was smiling a lot too, like she was high on something. Sakura didn't know what was going on, but she would find out. I can't ask Naruto though, he's completely oblivious. He wouldn't notice Hinata if she bit him. But that might not have been true. If she remembered right, Naruto had been alone with Hinata plenty of times. It occurred to her that Naruto might have more in common with Hinata than he did with most other people. They were both ignored by most adults. And they were both picked on by other kids, especially when they were little. Sakura even heard from Ino. Who heard from her parents. Who heard from a friend in the Hyuga clan that Hinata was being considered for removal from the succession. Meaning that her younger sister Hanabi would become next in line as leader of the Hyuga clan. As far as Sakura knew Naruto didn't have any family either so in a way they were the same there too. Maybe Naruto likes Hinata, and since everyone knows that Hinata likes Naruto. Sakura's musings were cut short by Naruto whooping and charging out onto the training field. Sasuke muttered something about overactive idiots and went to find someplace quieter to watch. She sat with Sasuke while Kakashi walked out with Naruto. Kakashi stopped Naruto's exuberant leaping and said, okay Naruto. This is what we're going to do. We're going to administer a test similar to the bell test. That should show us if you're back up to fighting form. Got it. Naruto let himself fall into a crouch and nodded. He thought, alright sensei. Time to show you how good I am when I feel good. Plus I feel so much stronger now. I'll ace this test. Naruto gathered chakra put his hands together, multi-shadow clone jutsu. An enormous explosion of smoke enveloped the training field. Even those watching were caught up in it. Sakura and Hinata coughed and Sasuke narrowed his eyes thinking, what could he be up to? Then. As the smoke cleared they got a good look at Naruto's personal army. Literally a one-man army. At least 400 clones filled the clearing, evenly spaced around Kakashi. Naruto shouted, now. The clones at the back leaped into the air while the ones further in charge Kakashi. The Jonin was able to predict where the attacks were coming from, but the sheer size of the assault was overwhelming. Kakashi spun, throwing shuriken in all directions to give himself space. Then he used Earth style to sink into the ground. Several clones crashed into the ground where he had been a second before. Kakashi thought he had slipped through the gauntlet of clones, but he was mistaken. The moment he reappeared he was set upon. He focused and dashed through the crowd of clones, stabbing as he went. His targets vanished left and right, but he felt that something was wrong. 
He tried to think of what Naruto's strategy was behind this, I don't get it. I know Naruto isn't very good with strategy, but he's got good coordination with his clones. So why is he just throwing them at me like this? He stabbed a clone through the eye as he finished that though, then executing a perfect backflip over the heads of his opponents. He landed on two blonde heads, keeping balance easily. Using the clones like stepping stones, he raced through the horde of orange looking for the real one. Out of the corner of his eye he saw the flash. He turned to deflect the incoming attack, but he missed completely. His kunai caught empty air. He landed in a crouch, dispatching two nearby clones with lightning fast kicks. Kakashi's eye searched for the real Naruto. The one that has blazed past him hadn't been a clone. Only the original could have moved that fast. Kakashi quickly checked his belt. Well the bells are still there. He had me for a second there. Why didn't he take a bell? Then he realized. Naruto had been going too fast to adjust his course. He couldn't move his hands to snatch the bells in mid-sprint since he was going so fast. Kakashi felt a light impact against his back. He whirled around and saw. Just for a heartbeat. Naruto's shoulder grazing past him as he snatched a bell. It shocked him that Naruto had managed to reach such speeds. As far as he knew Naruto was slower than Sasuke and Sasuke couldn't move that fast. Then Naruto's headlong dash took him face first into a tree. The wood splintered under the impact. Naruto's momentum was suddenly gone and he fell back on his rear, massaging his face. Bakashi watched as Naruto picked himself up and turned back, grinning. Naruto said, so how do you like the way I did sensei? I mean besides crashing into the tree. Kakashi rubbed the back of his neck, yes. Very good Naruto. You passed easy this time, but tell me. Were you always that fast? I didn't see anything matching that speed during the last match. Naruto brought his hand up in front of his eyes and clenched it into a fist. His grin widened, displaying his sharp fangs. He said, well I was sick last time you know. But I guess you're right sensei. I've never been this fast before. He shrugged, well. Does it matter really? I'm just fast now right? So anyway sensei since I did the test can I go take a break now? Bakashi shook his head in reproof. We need to test your strengths and weaknesses. And since you finished the first test so quickly. We are going to keep going. This comment caused Naruto to shrug. He said, okay sensei. What's next? There followed many tests on speed, strength, and chakra control. As Kakashi had expected, Naruto had a massive amount of stamina, not to mention huge chakra reserves. They trained for well over an hour as the others watched. But Kakashi noticed that despite the fact that he had so much stamina, he seemed to be tiring too quickly. Naruto concentrated his chakra and then released it in a wave around him as Kakashi had instructed him. Naruto felt sweat trickle down his neck. He shivered. It got so cold all of a sudden. He stopped the shiver and started to concentrate chakra again. His power rose to his command, forming a tight ball inside him, which he released again. The shockwave wasn't powerful. This exercise was designed to test how quickly you could gather and focus chakra. The grass rippled slightly as he did it again. Naruto let out a shaky breath. Jeez. I'm freezing. Dot there was a gnawing sensation in his gut. He forced himself to ignore it and focused again. Bakashi as well as Sakura and everyone else saw Naruto topple. They went to check on him. Hinata at a run, and Sasuke at a slow walk. The Jonin was already kneeling beside Naruto asking, Naruto. What's wrong? Answer me. Naruto hissed between his teeth, really. Thirsty. Kakashi stood up and shouted into the woods on the west side of the field, bring the emergency kit. He saw two medical ninja run out from the woods carrying a small case. One opened it as they came. They arrived and the young man who had opened the case handed him a blood pack. He quickly bent down, Hinata supported Naruto as he sat up and took it. They watched as Naruto bit into the corner of the pack. He sucked it dry in seconds and glanced around for another one. A trickle of blood showed on his chin as he saw the case. Naruto's hand shot out and grabbed it. He was so damn thirsty, I need more damn it. He popped the case open and found several different syringes and nothing else. No blood. Naruto felt his muscles cramp in his chest and a headache set in. I need. Naruto was fading fast into that realm of hunger. He'd use too much chakra. That's it. Too much chakra. I get it now. Naruto felt a touch on his face. His nose picking up an alluring scent. He wanted it. Naruto's eyes were drifting close, but that touch on his face was still there. Someone was leaning over him. He reached up and grasped the hand that rested on his forehead. It was smooth, but strong. Not strong enough, Naruto thought dreamily. He pulled the hand to his mouth and bit down hard. The second medical nin saw Naruto slump and his eyes close. She hurriedly checked his pulse. It was regular. Kakashi asked, what just happened? He looked worried. She said as she put her head to his chest to hear his heartbeat. I'm not sure. From out observations it seemed he was fine until just a while ago. 
perhaps his body was weakened by his condition. She put a hand on his forehead to check his temperature. Naruto groaned. Inada who was keeping him upright said, Naruto-kun. Hold on. Then before they could react Naruto's hand was clutching the medical ninjas with crushing force. Hinata and Kakashi heard an audible snap and a grinding noise. She screamed in pain as she felt her wrist fracture in several places. The strength in Naruto's grasp was unbelievable. She tried to extricate her hand from his grip, but he refused to let go. Kakashi moved to pry Naruto's fingers off, but he was too late. Naruto bit into her hand. Pain, followed by a searing sensation like scalding hot water. She gasped and yanked, succeeding only in pulling Naruto forward. Kakashi pulled out his kunai and held it by the blade. He was about to smack him between the eyes, but Naruto was pushing forward. He let go of her wrist, and his fangs found the crook of her elbow. She lashed out at his head, trying to pummel him off. Her attack didn't seem to faze him. He was drinking from her now. The feeling of her blood being extracted. She bit her lip. Pain radiated from her fractured wrist, locking out her thoughts. Bakashi gave Naruto a sharp THWACK across the back of the head. The impact dazed Naruto and his teeth pulled free. The medical nin crawled back frantically, getting out of reach. Naruto's hands flew to the back of his head a second later, ouch. Bad. Hurt. Then Kakashi brought his hand down on Naruto's neck. He crumpled, unconscious. Bakashi picked him up saying. You. What's your name? The girl who was now cradling her broken wrist against her chest while her friend healed it said, I'm Suntai. Ow. She winced as the bones in her wrist set. Kakashi said, you come with me to the hospital. We still don't know if this is transferable or if it is. Then how? She nodded and stood up. Next Kakashi turned to Hinata, he said, Hinata run ahead and tell Akana to get five or six blood packs and the next sedative. Hinata looked at Naruto sadly. But still fondly and dashed off. Sakura and Sasuke who had been standing back followed Kakashi as he hurriedly left the training field. The hospital room was quiet. It had been two hours or so since the botched training session. Kakashi stood with Akana and the third Hokage watching Naruto. He was still out cold. Suntai was asleep in a bed across from his. She had started to feel a wide range of physical side effects from the bite about 10 minutes after. Currently she was sedated to help her through the worst of the pain. A third spoke, well. This is very unfortunate, but I suppose it's best if we keep him here until we have a greater knowledge of this ailment. Kakashi and Akana nodded, the later saying, I hope we can find out what caused it soon. Otherwise we're stumbling around in the dark. Kakashi sighed, we'll try and test his limits again next week. But we'll be more cautious. We can't let this happen again. The three of them stood silent for a few minutes before leaving the room. There was a small. Rather high-pitched yawn and Hinata Hayuga sat up in bed. She blinked rapidly, clearing her vision. Her room was large. Very large. Far more than any girl really needed. Her bed was huge, big enough to be split into four different and still sizable beds. However, despite the amount of space, she had not decorated it very much. The walls were painted a lavender color which matched her eyes. A tapestry depicting the original mansion the Hayuga had built covered one wall, while various dressers and cabinets were set against another. A large chest set into the corner by the window held all of her ninja gear. Anada slipped off the bed and her toes sank into the wonderfully thick purple carpet that covered most of the floor. She walked across the room to her dresser and pulled out her morning clothes. A white t-shirt with Hayuga clan symbol on the back and comfortable back sweatpants. As she changed she activated her Byakugan to see if everyone was up yet. Niji was in the dining room sitting across from Hiyashi as was usual. The other bedrooms were blocked from her vision, but the rest of the house was clear to see. She smiled seeing a certain tall boy with spiky hair in the kitchen. She finished dressing and left her room. Hiyashi left the dining room just as Naruto entered. He took a seat away from Niji. They didn't usually get along, but after the last time they put each other in the hospital. They had called an uneasy truce. Naruto said, good morning Niji. The older boy nodded silently and continued eating. There was a sound of feet behind them, and Niji glanced back, expecting to be set upon by an enraged Hanabi. He had been practicing a special seal the previous day and accidentally set her hair on fire. He was fully expecting revenge. Probably in the form of a bucket of ice water or something similar. Then he saw Hinata wrap her arms affectionately around Naruto's neck. She hummed happily as Naruto greeted her, mourning Hinata-chan. She smiled and let go of him heading into the kitchen. Naruto turned back to his ramen smiling himself. Niji watched a brief exchange with confusion. He really didn't see why Hinata was so. So. Happy when it came to Naruto. For some reason she was infatuated with him. Had been for years. Niji had no clue why. He thought, it's a good thing she has enough sense not to do that while Hiyashi-sama is watching. Otherwise they would find themselves living on opposite sides of the house with guards at the door. 
Hinata walked back in a moment later with a bowl and a box of cereal. She sat next to Naruto, scooting her chair over even closer. Niji tried to ignore them, but it made him so uneasy when they. His eye caught Hinata kissing Naruto on the cheek. They are so lucky that I don't tell Hiashi about them. Honestly can't they act with more restraint. They finished eating quickly as they chatted and wondered how this had all come to pass. About a month ago the third Hokage had come to have a talk with Hiashi about Naruto. The next day Naruto was living with them. He took the room two doors down from Hinata's. In retrospect Naruto was an excellent sparring partner. As long as he wasn't fired up about something. He was completely unpredictable and had such a wide range of attack possibilities that he could keep almost anyone on their toes. But other than that benefit he wasn't a blessing to Niji. A hand. A hand that somehow exuded malice came down on Niji's shoulder. A chill ran up his back and he turned his head to look at Hanabi. Her hair was frazzled where it had caught fire and she was wearing the most evil smile he had ever seen. Her lips twisted in a feral grin that spoke to something horrible in his future. Hanabi said. Sweetly, I want you to know. Niji. I'm planning on cutting my hair today. He gulped. And I was. Wondering. If you would treat me to a shopping trip afterwards. The look on her face added in two additional words or else. Niji nodded and quickly left the table to put his dishes away. Hanabi could be pretty terrifying when she chose to be. Naruto smelled Hinata's unique perfume. He had come to think of it as a perfume anyway. It easily drowned out the smell and taste of his ramen. Hinata tucked her hair behind one ear and took a bite of her cereal. With effort Naruto turned his attention back to his own food, only to be distracted by the pressure of a small hand on his head. He twisted around to see Hanabi. What the? He asked, Hanabi. What happened to your hair? Looks like you put your head in the fireplace. She frowned at this blunt observation. She said, Niji was practicing a new seal and it backfired. But it hit me instead of him. So he's taking me shopping today to make up. That made Naruto chuckle. Niji shopping. Never happened. Hanabi shrugged, well if he wants to be able to sleep tonight, then he will. She smiled wickedly and skipped into the kitchen. Hinata glanced at her as she left. It was. Unnerving how creepy she could be sometimes. Naruto leaned forward and whispered in Hinata's ear, she's still just as scary to me as she was a month ago. She didn't disagree. Naruto turned back and finished his ramen. He pushed the bowl away from him and leaned back, taking that moment to stretch. Hinata paused and asked, Naruto-kun. How was it today? He muttered, uh. What? She clarified, how was the food today? And also. How thirsty were you when you woke up? Naruto said, I was pretty thirsty when I woke up. And breakfast wasn't too bad I guess. It's still a working progress you know. She knew it was. As part of him staying in the Hyuga mansion she had to keep tabs on him most of the day. It didn't leave much time for training unless it was with Naruto, but she didn't mind in the slightest. Spending most of the past month with Naruto was more than she could have wished for. Well maybe not everything. She still had a few wild dreams that had yet to come true. A sniff. And a cough. Naruto said, you know Hinata-chan. Whatever you're thinking about. Her eyes widened slightly and she blushed red. She would never get used to his insane sense of smell. He could sense what she was feeling through the change in her scent. Letting her thoughts stray when she was so close to him was asking for it. Naruto for his part had told her that she smelled wonderful. And being clean or dirty didn't seem to diminish that opinion much either way. It made her happy that he found her entrancing, even her smell. But his attraction to her was also a cause for concern. They had any number of close calls, mainly early in the morning before he ate or drank anything, or after intense training. He would be thirsty and her scent would set him off. In point of fact they had come within a hair's breadth of him biting her just three weeks before. She had been up early and took a shower. Then she had dressed and walked down the hall to his room. When she entered she had come this close to being bitten. After that she didn't enter without knocking. Naruto's biggest problem was simply his thirst. He couldn't get through even a single day without drinking at least a small amount of blood. Back when they had experimented in the hospital with Kakashi and Akana watching over. They had found that he could go without blood for two days. After one day physical pain became almost unbearable. And after two he went. Crazy. Watching her closely, Naruto realized she was deep in thought. Her expression setting into a look that Sherlock Holmes would have appreciated. She looked cute. Though that wasn't the only thing that came to his mind. Over the past few years she had grown her hair to where it reached to her rear. And along with her other features. Well. Seeing her like that with her scent strong and her heartbeat in his ears. It was starting to make him lightheaded. He stood up and pushed his chair back. Hinata looked up at him distractedly asking, where are you going Naruto-kun? He said, I need a drink. Worried by this remark, she followed him out of the room. He headed upstairs and to his room. It was large, and most of it was dedicated to training her his condition. One side of the room was liberally scattered with weapons and other ninja tools. 
the other had a miniature medical unit set up. A small, very specialized refrigerator held his supply of blood, while another held sedative compounds. Over the two years since he had first contracted this disease he had become competent enough to take care of himself. Most problems arose by circumstance. Being thirsty or tired and the mansion being too far away. Anata saw Naruto open the blood safe and pull out a pack. She walked over where she was standing behind him. He sat down on the bed and opened the corner of the packet. He then sipped slowly from it. Confused she asked, why don't you just drink it Naruto-kun? He shook his head and continued, as if saying, not right now. She waited for him to finish. When he dropped the empty pack on the bed she asked again. He said, I needed to savor it instead of just gulping it down like I usually do. But why? He looked at her and licked his lips. His eyes settled on her throat again. That was normal. She was a constant temptation. Like a bar of sweet chocolate duct taped to your forehead. Always there, but you had to rip the tape off to get at the chocolate. He could bite her. Any time. He was easily stronger than her, and faster. But he remembered too well what happened to the one person he had bit. The medical nin who he had bitten shortly after he first contracted this curse. She had gone through the same pain he had, but in the end she had died. Her body destroying itself from the inside. But still. Despite that memory, Hinata's blood called to him on a daily basis. Scratch that. More like a minute to hourly basis depending on how near she was. Hinata put a hand on his arm in question. He snapped out of his trance, but was caught again by the attraction of her presence. His body demanded contact. He took her hand and pulled her down to sit next to him. Then he turned to her. She seemed confused and distracted, but her eyes questioned him. He kissed her. Their lips met and Hinata blushed, she pulled away slightly asking, Naruto-kun. Is. I mean. Are you okay? Naruto nodded and pushed his nose against hers, tilting her head till he could kiss her again. Slowly, Hinata responded, her eyes closed and she let him push her back onto the bed. His hands traveled up her sides and over her arms, pulling them above her head. Then he leaned down to kiss her again, long on the lips. She forced her head up trying to deepen the kiss. He allowed her to push him back a bit, before moving his lips to her chin, and then down the curve of her throat. His tongue darted out to taste her skin. At the same time, his hands moved to the small of her back and just between her breasts. He nibbled her neck, his instincts telling him to go further. Teeth scraped across her neck and her heartbeat sped up. She thought, he's. He's going to what are you two doing the sound wave washed over them and Naruto rolled over on his back, his sensitive ears blasted into numbness. He clamped his hands over his head. Hinata sat up and looked horrified at her little sister, who was looking at once furious and pleased. Hinata tried to speak, but her words refused to leave her throat, and all that came out was a stutter. Anabi strode forward and looked at them. She asked, what do you two think would have happened if it was dad instead of me who walked in just now? Naruto still couldn't hear a thing and thus. Didn't answer. Hinata said, sorry sis. The younger girl said, hey don't apologize to me. I don't care if you're kissing, but I would catch hell for not telling dad about your. Um. Relationship. Seeing as he's like the only one in the whole village who is blind enough not to notice how you two are together. That was true enough. Even though they had been boyfriend and girlfriend for over two years now, they had somehow. Neither of them knew how. Kept it from Hiashi. Naruto chalked it up to the fact that everyone liked them as a couple and neglected telling the elder Hayuga who would no doubt disapprove. Hanabi thought that he was just being dense. As Hinata rubbed her neck she felt the ghost feeling of Naruto's fangs at her throat. She shivered. Hanabi said, you guys should be more careful. She turned on her heel to leave the room saying, feel free to thank me anytime. The door closed behind her with a snap. Naruto was still mildly dazed, but he had managed to sit up. He looked to her and grimaced, she does know how to shout. Maybe she took lessons from Sakura and Ino. Hinata shrugged. She said, well. Um. I'll go now Naruto-kun. I have things to do this morning. He nodded and stayed on the bed as she left. He watched her swing out of the room, her steps seeming reluctant. Back in her own room she flopped onto her bed and shuddered. But not in dread or fear at almost being bitten again. Over the past few months she had found herself wondering what it would feel like to have Naruto bite her. Even though that other girl had died, she couldn't get the idea out of her head. She'd come so far as to dream about it. It was a bit frightening though. She would find herself at the breakfast table and she would be reading or doing something else when a breath would heat the back of her neck. Naruto would say, morning Hina-chan. He'd kiss her neck and then bite into her. Hinata fell back onto the bed with a whimper. Thinking about it made her ache pleasantly. She hoped that the feeling wasn't what she thought it was. Does the thought of Naruto biting me really turn me on? That bothered her. Because it shouldn't make her feel that way. She shouldn't long for the day when he at last lost control and drank from her. Hinata forced herself to sit up. She was beginning to get that feeling in her chest. Like butterflies but stronger. 
No. I don't want that. I don't. I want to live with Naruto-kun and someday get married, but I don't want him to bite me. Her mental shout went unheeded, and almost like the world was refuting her, the door opened a crack. Naruto poked his head in. His face was creased in strain. He said, Hinata-chan. I really don't know what you're... Uh. Thinking you're doing, but I can smell you from my room. He gulped, it's not helping. Her cheeks flamed red again. She thought, oh. Kami. Even Naruto noticed. I I do. Wanted. She shifted on the bed and said, um. Naruto-kun. Could you come here? He shook his head quickly, I don't think I should. I almost bit you just now and. I might not. You know. She stood up and walked to him. When she was at the door she opened it and took his hand, pulling him into the room. When they were in the middle of the floor she hugged him. He went stiff, his mind racing. Slowly, hesitantly, he wrapped his arms around her and rested his head on top of hers. After a moment she said, you don't have to try so hard Naruto-kun. His arms tightened around her. His voice was raspy as he said, I know. But I can't lose you. I can't bite you. And. Just like this dot it's making it hard. She pulled away from him and tilted her face up to his. She whispered, you can do it. She bit her lip and pulled her shirt to the side, revealing her pale skin. Naruto sucked in a sharp breath and practically flew back across the room. He thought, she's gone crazy. I mean she wants him to bite her no. I can't do that. Oh, jeez. Hinata's small hands crawled up under his shirt as he stood in the doorway. Her body molded to his and her teeth nibbled at the back of his own neck. She was too good at this. It wasn't fair. Hinata knew how to make him give in. But until now she had never used that knowledge. She forced him to turn around. He looked down at her. Those lavender eyes were half-lidded and her lips. Slightly parted. She looked. He didn't have the right words to describe her at that moment. Then she was up on tippy toe, nuzzling him. Her tongue poked out and she licked his whisker marks. His breath quickened and red crept up his cheeks. His whisker marks were his special spot and her attention was causing him to lose focus. He struggled to keep his mind on track, but his teeth were aching and his mouth felt dry. Hinata looked so. Tasty. Naruto slipped back into his room and almost crawled to the blood bank in the corner. He jerked open the door and pulled out as many packs as he could carry. Then he returned to the comfort of his bed. The contents of nine blood packs passed his lips like nothing happened. Three more didn't diminish his thirst at all. His mind kept running over what she said, over and over. You don't have to try so hard. You can do it. Unbidden, an image flashed into his mind, setting up shop. Hinata. Pulling her shirt to the side, showing him her neck. That fragile skin. He tried to imagine something else, anything else. But her scent was drifting from her room. It was enticing, like your favorite food lying in front of you. But nothing more than your parents' words, telling you not to eat. Naruto finished off the remainder of the blood in his little refrigerator and laid in bed only just satisfied enough to sleep. He could almost always sleep during the day. Except when he was thirsty. He closed his eyes. It had taken almost 15 pack to take the edge off his thirst, and sleep was a welcome distraction. The next day. When he woke nearly 24 hours later he felt like he was dying. His thirst forced him out of bed, driving him into the hall. A smell, sweet and delicious drew him through a door to his right. Going through it he saw. Her. On the bed. Her hair like a ebony fan was spread over her and the bed. Her feet kicked slowly back and forth over her back. She was turned away from him, but she turned when she heard the door swing open further. Hinata asked surprised, Naruto-kun. Naruto inhaled her scent and walked to the bed. Hinata rolled over and sat up, looking concerned. His arms reached out and took her own. Then he was on top of her, pinning her to the bed. His arms held her down and their legs tangled together. Hinata gasped, Naruto what or why he spoke over her, were you really telling me I could bite you? She closed her mouth and looked to the side, red already turning her cheeks rosy. He said, I heard you say it. Do you want me? To do it, he took a hold of her chin, forcing her to look into his eyes. She nodded once, just barely. He said softly, thanks Hina-chan. He dipped his head as he let go of her arms. The fabric of her shirt pulled aside and he felt her pulse pound in his ears. He kissed her neck as his hands pulled at her clothes. Her shirt slipped over her shoulder. Hinata felt the anticipation building as he kissed her again. She never felt his fangs slip easily into her skin. It was like the pain was absent. She only realized he was drinking from her when he pulled back. There was a red drop on his chin and there was something warm spreading over her skin. Naruto kissed her lips and she tasted her own blood. The coppery taste invaded her mouth making her feel lightheaded. Then she heard Naruto say, look at me Hinata. She did. His eyes were red. Red as a burning sunset after a wildfire. And his pupils were slits in that inferno. Like a black candle flame. Naruto ran on instinct. He didn't know what he was doing, but it felt right. Felt good. 
As he spoke, Hinata looked up at him. Her lavender eyes unblinking. He whispered to her, their faces only an inch apart, you're mine Hinata. She didn't respond. Didn't even blink. But her eyelids seemed to grow heavy, and her breathing quickened even more. His instincts gave him a new directive. He said, roll over. Immediately she nodded and rolled onto her front. Naruto adjusted his position and looked to her neck. He moved her long dark hair off of her. Then he summoned his power. It came easily, like a serpent sliding through him. He leaned forward and bit down, at the very base of the back of her neck. His chakra rushed into her through the contact. Naruto pulled back watching as blood welled up from the two marks. Hinata moaned slightly, and Naruto's keen smell registered her enjoyment of what he was doing. Naruto's eyes widened slightly as the blood that had come from the bike began to move. It rippled and shimmered, forming an intricate design on her white skin. It was of deepest red, and it seemed to be extending outward in all directions, like a pattern unfolding. Naruto bit his lip and a drop of blood fell onto her neck. The spreading mark stopped and almost shivered, growing darker till it assumed a shade that was almost a dark violet. Hinata shuddered and breathed a long sigh. Naruto asked, Hinata-chan. Are you alright? She nodded her head into the covers. Curious about what he had wrought, Naruto stroked the mark with a finger. Hinata back instantly arched off the bed. Naruto was startled as she collapsed back and curled up, shivering. He moved to where he could see her face. It was red and her eyes were open. Her breath came in quick gasps. He asked, Hinata. Tell me something. She purred out, thank you Naruto-kun. That confused him. He pulled her to where she was sitting up. He put one hand on her cheek asking, are you okay? She smiled and said, yes. Her eyes clouded with confusion and she asked, but what did you do Naruto-kun? I I feel. Amazing. I didn't know it would feel like that. Naruto admitted, I didn't really know what I was doing. Sorry about that. Then he remembered his thirst. He asked, scratching his head, anyway. Could I uh. Have some more. He didn't finish speaking and she was pulling off her shirt. His own face heated up as she pressed forward, yes Naruto-kun. Please. As much as you want. She tilted her head to allow him access. The third Hokage sat at his desk in his office. He was looking. Staring more like, at his one-time student. The man before him was tall with shockingly spiky white hair. He wore special armor that would have taken him an hour to fully describe, and a large summoning scroll rested on his back. His name was Jiraiya and believe it or not, he was the current Toad Sage. The third said, Jiraiya, I apologize for taking you away from your research. I know how important it is to you, but there is an important matter that requires your assistance. The man bowed saying, how may I help? I assume. That this must be of some great importance to the entire village to ask for my help. Saratobi nodded, that it is. You see you have been gone for quite a few years. I would hope you remember your godson. Ureya breathed out, Naruto. The third said, two years ago Naruto contracted a disease of some kind. It gives him incredible power, but causes an intense thirst for human blood. We have managed to keep him sedated for the better part of that time, testing to see if we could cure him or manage the symptoms. However he has gained immunity to nearly all sedatives we know, and we decided the only way to keep him. And thus the rest of the village safe, was for him to live in the High Uga mansion. There are half a dozen individuals there at any given time who could hold him down in case of an emergency. I say half a dozen because even the High Uga clan instant kill technique. I think you know the one of which I speak. Merely knocks him unconscious. The toad sage's jaw dropped, but that skill is used to kill powerful opponents. Jonin rank or higher. Just how powerful has Naruto become? Saratobi sighed, very powerful indeed, though he shows little interest or ambition, other than protecting the few friends he has, and becoming my successor. Jiraiya nodded smiling slightly, that's my boy. Taking on the dream from both his parents. The third said, all of that aside. I would like you to visit Naruto and do some training with him. Perhaps you can test him. Even Kakashi can't hold his own against him now. As I was saying. Once you have trained him a while. I want you to take a select band of ninjas and find Tsunade. She is the only person who I can think of who can cure him. Ureya said, I'll do my best to train Naruto, but I don't know if I could convince Tsunade to come back even if I found her. Sirotobi said, she has no choice. Naruto is the single most important individual in this village besides me. And in time he will certainly surpass me in power. He is the Ninetales Jinchuriki and he must be cured. His voice had risen to a shout by the end. Ureya nodded his understanding and left soon after. Naruto examined his reflection in his mirror. His hair was getting longer. His skin paler, mostly from lack of time outside. And yet, despite the amount of time that had been taken away from training, his muscles only seemed to get bigger. He pulled up his shirt and examined his six-pack shaking his head, unreal. Then he turned back to the mirror head on. His fangs were long and if he clamped his mouth shut, then they poked out from his lip in plain view. 
His eyes had returned to their normal deep blue, but the pupils were still slit. As for the rest of him. He was stronger than before and all he'd done was bite Hinata. But then again. He hadn't exactly thought that he wouldn't get stronger. It was almost a given. If he stopped drinking blood he would get weaker until he could barely walk. But if he drank more blood he would get stronger. And this was only the second time he'd ever had fresh blood. He wasn't entirely sure what was so special about fresh blood, but the thought of biting her again. It made his fangs ache. And his eyes flash red for a brief moment. Naruto turned and left the bathroom. Hinata was sitting on his bed now. She had changed into new clothes. The ones she had been wearing were. Unsuitable now as they had been soaked through with red. She smiled up at him as he walked towards her. He stopped in front of her and asked, so where are we going today? She shook her head, you choose Naruto-kun. He thought for a moment. Well. What I want to do is. He jumped into bed behind her and dragged her against his chest, pulling her hair to the side and licking the mark on the back of her neck. She gasped and her whole body tensed and relaxed several times. She then slumped against him shivering. Her voice came out like a sigh, Naruto-kun. If you keep doing that. I won't be able to. He nibbled her neck. Hinata closed her eyes and just let him pamper her. Several minutes later they were walking through the village. Hinata held his arm, walking close to him. He was smiling as they meandered down the streets. It was then that Naruto spied a comical figure with what looked like. Hey is that Kakashi's Icha Icha book? He was tall and. Weird looking. He was, at the moment, questioning to two young women who were walking by the adult bookstore. Naruto stopped Hinata saying, hey Hinata-chan. Watch this. He said dot sexy jutsu. And a small could of smoke enveloped him. When it dispersed there was a very female Naruto standing next to her. He or she was wearing the signature black and orange jacket that he started wearing a year or so before. As well as a short black combat skirt. Naruto's hair was in two blonde pigtails and his grin and turned cutesy. Hinata watched as Naruto skipped over to where the man was. He turned as the two women hurried away from. She saw the man grin as Naruto stopped in front of him. Hiraya tried to get the girls to stay so he could ask them about Naruto, but they were gone already. Then as he turned to continue his search he saw a blonde pig-tailed girl skipping towards him. He looked the girl up and down as she made a short stop in front of him. She was wearing orange and black with a short skirt. Her lightly tanned skin and blue eyes reminded him of Minato. Hiraya asked her, hello my girl. Have you seen a boy named Naruto? The girl's eyes widened and her jaw fell open. Then she asked indignant, excuse me, a boy Jiraiya nodded. That's what I said isn't it? Medium height, blonde hair blue eyes, and. His fingers pantomimed facial markings as his jaw moved up and down. The girl said, yeah and these right. She used one slender hand to caress her own whisker marks. He turned back around and forced himself to say, well. Um Naruto. I'm Jiraiya the Toad Sage, and the third Hokage has informed me that I will be training you. Training. Naruto grinned saying, that's great. I've been kinda stuck for things to do lately since I can't really go on missions. Jiraiya, growing accustomed to the idea that Naruto was a girl asked, is there some place we can go and talk? Naruto said, yeah totally. But let me grab Hinata first. The blonde girl ran off into the crowded street. Jiraiya assured himself that everything was fine. He would just have to adjust his training plans. But he would have to talk with the old man. Saratobi the third Hokage must have been playing a joke on him. A moment later Naruto returned with a young very beautiful girl. Her dark hair had a blue tint, and her eyes, which should have been a pale gray or white, were a light lavender. She looked rather confused or rather as though she were trying not to give something away. Naruto then introduced her as Hinata Hayuga. She blushed and stepped slightly behind him. Jiraiya thought, well. She's a shy one. Naruto said, we can go to training field 7. That's where I used to train all the time. Jiraiya said that it was fine and he followed the two girls out of the village. They arrived at the training field, and Jiraiya decided it was time to get things over with. He said, Naruto. I know about your secret. I will be training you in that regard as well. So you don't have to hide your abilities around me. Naruto nodded and made his expression glum, well, there is this one secret I haven't told anyone yet. Jiraiya watched as Naruto shuffled his feet, seeming embarrassed. He asked, well. What is it? Naruto looked up grinning hugely, I'm not a girl. A poof of smoke later Naruto was revealed in his true form. Jiraiya jaw dropped. Naruto roared in laughter and fell over backwards. Even Hinata giggled. The Toad Sage felt himself deflate. He'd been starting to feel good about the upcoming training. But this. Was actually more what he had expected. Well at least he was a boy after all, but he felt mightily stupid. Then as Naruto managed to stand up, still chuckling evilly, Jiraiya saw his. Other features. His hair was long and spiky, though not as much as his own. His eyes were piercing blue, but the pupils were slitted like a cat's. He had long fangs that looked quite sharp and his hands bore. 
something close to claws. Other than that he was extremely fit. His muscles were far more developed than they normally would have been, and his full height surprised him. He was taller than the Hokage had said. When Naruto regained his composer he stood straight and stepped over to him, looking only slightly up into his own eyes. Jiraiya smiled, but felt an overwhelming felling of dread. They faced each other across the clearing. Naruto's grin matching Jiraiya's. Hinata watched from the sidelines. The man said, before we start. I'd like you to know Naruto. The third told me that you're at a high enough level that I can throw quite a bit at you, so don't think I'll hold back. Naruto growled, I don't mind sensei. A Jiraiya lunged forward, far too slow. Naruto dodged to the side, but still came close to being impaled. Jiraiya's hair had hardened and lash around like a giant spiky blade. Where the hell did that come from? Naruto jumped out of range and started making hand signs. Jiraiya didn't recognize the jutsu, but he started to weave a defense just in case. Naruto smiled wider thinking, beat this old man. Then Naruto shouted, wind style super exploding wind shockwave. Thus before the wall of wind engulfed him he thought, how the hell can he use that jutsu? It takes way too much chakra to use. Unless the nine-tailed fox's seal has eroded significantly, there's no way he could use that technique. The wind rushed in from all directions like heavyweights on his limbs and back. Jiraiya knew that he needed to escape this jutsu soon, but it would take him too long to summon enough chakra to dispel it. Right now he could just barely make out Naruto through the cutting winds. He would need to either exit the air bubble itself or do enough damage to Naruto that he stopped funneling chakra into the jutsu. Jiraiya took a step forward, preparing to make a dash for Naruto. If the boy knew anything about sharpening the wind around him then he was in trouble. Naruto might turn the entire area into a cutting blender. Jiraiya gathered his chakra and then sprinted towards Naruto. At that moment the wind disappeared and he was forced to correct his trajectory. Ten feet from Naruto the blonde seemed to palm the air between them. And a sonic boom crackled in his eardrums as he was flung backwards. Then Naruto was on top of him. A kunai flashed in Jiraiya's vision and he rolled, flinging Naruto away from him. He turned already forming hand signs. He drew in a huge breath and then expelled a fireball that engulfed the entire area where Naruto had been standing. When the flames dissipated there was nothing there. Jiraiya figured he'd used a substitution. The he felt a wind at his back and a fist buried itself in his lower back. An audible crunch could be heard as the vertebra in his back ground together painfully. Jiraiya's kicked out, but caught air. His attacker shouted, multi-shadow clone jutsu. Jiraiya whipped around as the massive cloud of smoke engulfed everything. When it dispersed he could see the entire training field, the trees bordering it, and most of the visible land in sight was surrounded. Well over a thousand clones seemed to bristle with energy and anticipation. Jiraiya said, nice going Naruto, but you don't honestly think that a few hundred clones will take me down. Most of the clones smiled at that. One of them said, I wouldn't worry about us. Another one shouted, yeah. It's the boss you have to watch out for. A third one said, and you've got one in 1500 odds of hitting the right one. Then they charged. Jiraiya was so busy dodging attacks and launching a few of his own that he couldn't even spare the focus to search for the real one. That was until the real Naruto slammed his open palm into his face, sending him spinning through the mass of clones. Jiraiya used his chakra to pull his hair around him in a tight ball as he spun through the clones. Then his hair hardened and tiny hairs shot out like Shenban to skewer dozens if not more of his enemies. Once the spin had stopped Jiraiya admired his work. Despite taking a painful blow to the face he had wiped out a good eighth of the clones. Now he just need to take out the rest and he could focus on the original, who was probably running very low on chakra by now. Jiraiya let a lazy smile cross his face. He had spotted Naruto, sneaking through the underbrush to the left. He thought, found you Naruto, can't hide from a Sanin forever you know. He exploded into motion, barreling toward Naruto. Caught by surprise, Naruto had no time to dodge the sage's lightning-fast attack. Jiraiya's hand, finger pointing outwards like claws, crashed into Naruto's chest. Jiraiya's thumbnail now firmly embedded in his solar plexus. The attack was designed to send an opponent's chakra network of line in a single blow. It was very similar to the gentle fist technique, except that you had to be more accurate and. It wasn't so gentle. Naruto stumbled back and Jiraiya heard the poof of clones vanishing behind him. Jiraiya said, you did well Naruto, but I just shut down your chakra network with that move. You're finished. Naruto looked up. His eyes had gone red and he grinned. Six blows connected with Jiraiya from behind at the same time, hurling him through the air and into Naruto who, obligingly, buried his fist in Jiraiya's gut. The toad sage landed on the ground gasping. Naruto said, sorry sensei, but I've been training with Niji Hayuga for the past month and he has been disabling my chakra points every time we fight. These days. My chakra points can be shut off, but they come back on pretty fast. Jiraiya pushed himself to his feet and looked down at Naruto. His eyes had returned to their pristine blue. 
Jiraiya said, that shouldn't happen Naruto. Your chakra points aren't like white blood cells, and my attacks aren't like a virus. Your chakra points aren't supposed to become more resilient the more they get shut off. The boy shrugged and asked, is this test done cause I'm hungry? Jiraiya went stiff, uh. Well I don't know where you usually get your. Naruto smirked and said, relax and say, I already had enough blood for the day. I can eat normal food. Jiraiya sighed and asked, so where do you go for regular food? Naruto pumped his fist in the air, Ichiraku Raymond. That caused a memory to flash across Jiraiya's mind. Of a red-haired woman chowing down while her husband looked on in awe. It caused him to smile. He said, then let's go. We'll talk about how you did while we eat. Naruto nodded and they went to Ichiraku, picking Hinata up along the way. Jiraiya rubbing his back inconspicuously. Jiraiya sat with an audible groan in a chair in the Hokage's office. Kakashi and Akana were in attendance along with Siratobi. The old man asked, so Jiraiya. Tell me how it went with Naruto today. Jiraiya leaned back in the chair popping his neck and back. He grimaced. To tell you the truth he beat the crap out of me in the first round. Then we went to lunch. Mostly because I needed some time to recover. Then we fought three more times. The second match was a draw and I pulled wins for the last two. I'll tell you though, he put up a monster fight even after he was exhausted. Saratobi leaned forward, he beat you in an honest fight. You weren't holding back. That made Jiraiya shrink a little. He said, actually yes. He caught me completely by surprise. I never anticipated he would have such massive reserves of chakra, even without the demon's help. He was using jutsu that were Jonin rank or above, as far as chakra requirements go. Kakashi said, Naruto must have been learning from his various sparing partners in the Hyuga clan. He never had too many jutsu, though the ones he had were versatile. What move in particular surprised you? Jiraiya scratched his chin thinking about all the jutsu that Naruto used throughout the day's fighting. He said, I think the two that surprised me most were both wind release. He's obviously been training hard with his wind element. Anyway the two jutsu that really shocked me were wind style super exploding wind shockwave dot and the air palm dot Kakashi's eye was wide. He turned to the third asking, where could Naruto have learned that first one? That's a cage level technique. I know Naruto had colossal amounts of chakra but. Saratoi said, I don't know where he learned that one. It's not a well-known move for those who haven't been to the sand village. The second Kazakiage invented the technique. It is extremely versatile and when used properly can exhibit the effects of three or four different elements. It can crush, slice, or suffocate an enemy. And masters of the technique can even drain chakra from opponents trapped within. The Kashi turned back to Jiraiya, did Naruto tell you where he learned it? Jiraiya shook his head then said, but I figure he learned the second one from Niji Hayuga. It seems that they spar nearly every day. Kakashi raised an eyebrow, Niji and Naruto sparring. I didn't think those two would ever get along enough to do that, but I suppose it probably started out as them just fighting over something. Saratobi asked, tell me Jirei what do you think of Naruto in other respects? Did he seem emotionally stable to you? Before he could answer Akana asked, did anything strange happen that you saw? Anything at all. Naruto gets ever mood swings that sometimes are a trigger for his thirst. Jiraiya said, sure plenty of things seemed strange. There was this one time near the end of out last match. I just smacked Naruto's head in the ground and his head must have caught a rock because he came up bleeding like a fountain. Saratoi, Okana and Kakashi listened raptly as Jiraiya spoke. We were about to go back at it when the Hyuga girl, Hinata comes running up. She was with us the whole time by the way. And she bends down to clean the blood of Naruto's face. I'm not completely sure, but it seemed to me that they're a couple. I mention it as strange because everyone tells me that Naruto is a loner with only a very few friends. But also. Naruto had this look on his face. I can't really describe it. Bakashi nodded saying, Hinata has been infatuated with Naruto for as long as anyone can really remember. She probably had a crush on him when they were little kids at academy. Anyway, they started to get closer about the time that Naruto became a genin under me. And about a month after he was bitten they were indisputably together. About the only person close to them who doesn't know is Hinata's father. However no one will ever mention it to him because they like Naruto and Hinata as a couple. Okana nodded, they are so very cute together. But more to the point did you see anything else worth mentioning? Jiraiya nodded and began again. Sakura, Hinata and Tenten, along with Ino relaxed in the village hot springs after their respective days. Hinata dozed in the corner of the hot spring. Her hair was parted down her from in the water. Usually she tied it up, but it was too much of a hassle for her today. She smiled to herself, dreaming of Naruto. Or cinnamon buns. No defiantly Naruto. Ino spoke from her left, so. Hinata how is Naruto doing? We don't see him too often these days. Hinata nodded slowly, still lost in thought. Her lack of response alerted Ino to possible gossip. She inquired further, come on Hinata, tell me. 
I mean it's not like you have anything that you would want to hide right? Hinata opened her eyes and looked across at Ino. And with a straight face said, no. Of course not. Ino nodded, still suspicious of Hinata's lethargy, so Naruto hasn't been uh. Wearing you out. Hinata closed her eyes tiredly, yes. A little. Naruto tires me out. Sometimes. She yawned, just watching him makes me want to go back to bed and sleep. Sakura raised her eyebrows and asked, and what was Naruto doing today that was so exhausting to watch? Hinata mumbled, oh. He was training all day with Yureya the Toad Sage. One of the three Sanin or something. Like. That. That piqued her friend's interest. Tenten asked, wait. Naruto is training with one of the legendary Sanin Hinata nodded. Sakura said, that's pretty amazing considering it's Naruto. Ino agreed, yeah never expected him to get some one-on-one -on -one with a Hokage level shinobi. By the way Hinata. What was this Jiraiya guy like? The dark-haired Hayuga said, Jiraiya sensei. He seemed okay. But Naruto made him look stupid when they first met. You know. Pulling a prank on him. Sakura and Ino both face palmed. Ino said, aw come on Naruto. When will he learn? You don't prank people like that. Hinata rubbed between her shoulder blades. Her skin itched at the base of her neck. Her mind switched to daydream mode. She imagined that Naruto was calling her. Like his voice was inside her head. Sakura's voice cut into her thoughts like a dull knife, Hinata. Hello. Earth to Hinata. She looked up and the itch between her shoulders intensified. She asked, what is it Sakura? The pin cat sighed in exasperation. I asked how Naruto did against Jiraiya. Her lips formed an O, oh, and she blushed in slight embarrassment. Oh that. He did very good, especially with the first fight. I'm not sure if Naruto would have been able to beat him in a real fight though. Tenten and Ino both gasped in surprise, what? Naruto managed to beat him in an actual fight, Tenten's jaw worked, and Ino's eyes were bugged out. Hinata nodded slowly, but he lost the last two matches. Jirei was really good at spotting him even with all his clones. Sakura said, I figured that he could probably give anyone a run for their money at first, but an experienced fighter like one of the Sanin isn't going to be fooled by Naruto for long. The other girls nodded their own agreement. After that the subject shifted to how everyone else's days went. Hinata's hand constantly returned to scratching at the bothersome spot at the base of her neck. It was driving her crazy. Eventually she said, um. Sorry to interrupt, but could one of you scratch my back? It's itching like mad. Ino nodded and waited through the water till she came to Hinata, who turned around. Ino gasped, Hinata. When did you get a tattoo? She thought, tattoo. Wait. That must be what Naruto was telling me about. What do I tell them? Sakura and Tenten moved through the water to examine her back. She tried to cover it up. I completely forgot about it. Oh no. I can't tell them how I got it, but they'll want to know. Tenten said, that's really cool Hinata, who did that? Hinata said it before she could stop herself, um. Naruto-kun. Damn. Why did I just say that? Oh Naruto-kun. Please forgive me. Ino's jaw dropped, wow. Naruto did that I never knew he was an artist. Sakura shook her head in wonder, he never ceases to amaze me. Tenten asked, so does it symbolize anything? I mean is it like a? Hinata said, it's nothing really. Naruto just did it okay. It doesn't mean anything to you. Ino smiled, oh. So it is something special between you and Naruto huh? Well. That's interesting. In response to that Hinata turned around to hide her mark. Her cheeks were bright red now. She thought, Naruto. I wish you were here so we could leave. You could think of something to tell them. I'm no good at lying. Ino asked, so what does it? Commemorate. First kiss or something better. Hinata's eyes bugged out and her neck started to turn red as well. Sakura hissed at Ino, stop it already Ino, she doesn't need you badgering her about it. Tenten giggled but stopped as a loud voice called out, hey Hinata. Everyone froze. It was obviously Naruto's voice. Ino and the others watched as Hinata bolted out of the hot spring. There was a flurry of movement in the dressing room and then hushed voices. Ino and Sakura nodded to each other and the three girls crept to the wall to listen in. Hinata hugged him tightly. She said, Naruto-kun. How did you know I was here? He nuzzled her saying, don't you remember Hinata-chan, I can smell you across the village. Anyway that's not the reason I came. I had this nagging feeling like you needed help. Hinata nodded quickly, I did. Naruto-kun. Ino and Sakura and Tenten saw the mark. They wanted to know about it. Naruto shrugged, just tell them that it's a tattoo. Nothing that isn't sort of true. She said, I did tell them that, but I accidentally said that. You were the one who did it. She looked down resting her head on his chest. I don't see what the problem is, but. Anyway if you're done in the hot spring why don't we go back to the house? She smiled, okay Naruto-kun. But could you scratch my back? It's driving me crazy. He grinned, sure. She turned around and he pushed a hand under her jacket. Her skin was still moist and hot. 
He pulled her in close to him and he rubbed over where he knew the mark to be. Hinata let out a near silent moan and her body relaxed. Naruto smelled her hair, then moved to nibbled at her ear. He asked, that better Hinata? She sighed out, yes. Thanks Naruto-kun. He nodded and took her by the hand, leading her back towards the Hyuga compound. Back inside the hot spring Sakura whistled, wow. Did you two hear the same thing? Ino nodded silent. Tenten said, I would swear I heard her moan. Dot 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 Sakura asked, you heard it too. Jeez. When did Naruto become such a... She trailed off without finishing. Tenten thought out loud, should we tell anyone? The Budo, the right hand man to Orochimaru, one of the three great Sanin. And probably the most despised, was sitting in front of his master. Orochimaru had long straight black hair and skin like grey stone. His eyes were like a snake's, and his tongue was as close as one could come to a serpent's forked organ. He hissed at his servant, Caputo. You have failed me more times in the past two years than in all the time you have served me. I am. Disappointed in you. The Budo pushed himself out of the chair and bowed low, I offer my sincerest apologies Lord Orochimaru, but your plan has been most difficult to carry out. There are few enough opportunities to catch him alone. And without the power you entrusted with me the first time. I could never capture him. Green slitted eyes near out as Orochimaru said, like I have said before. I want no excuses. I want to harness the power I implanted in him as soon as possible. That boy is the only test subject who has survived. That curse that you placed on him is not of my own making. Thus I need to observe him firsthand to gain knowledge of it. Trying to be submissive while at the same time being stern Kabuto said, he has much greater fortitude than either of us thought my lord. And it seems that he has control over his powers. If he were berserk I could do more but. Silence. Orochimaru's visage leaned over him menacing and furious for one moment, then the snake Sanin slid back into his seat. He said, if you are unable to carry out your mission then call in the favor with the Akatsuki member I told you of. But my lord. The Akatsuki are after the demon inside him. We would be handing him over to them on a silver platter. Orochimaru smiled, nonsense. As you well know each of us have different motivations. His motivation is money and power. But mostly money. If there is enough wealth to be gained he will kill or betray anyone. The Budo nodded, then it will be done my lord. Orochimaru sighed and leaned back, good. Get me that boy. I will be very interested in how he fares. Minus one week later. Jiraiya and Naruto yawned in unison. They were both stretched out on the grass at training field 7. Jiraiya was saying, yep Naruto. That's all there is to it. The jutsu of the fourth hokage. But I want you to remember. It's a lot harder than it looks so don't expect to master it like you do other jutsu. It took its own creator years to master it. Naruto smirked. Yes and say well. I'll have it mastered by the time you get back with this Tsunade woman. Hiraya sat up and gave him a sigoing but disbelieving look, sure Naruto. You do that and I'll put my vote in for the next Hokage early. Naruto frowned dangerously, don't underestimate me sensei. I will become Hokage. The older man frowned himself, you better Naruto, I didn't teach you the fourth jutsu for nothing. He laughed and patted Naruto's shoulder. Then he stood. Well Naruto. It's about time that I get going. I'll see you when I get back about two weeks from now. Naruto nodded and asked, so um. How are you going to find this woman again? Hiraya said, it's well known in certain circles that Tsunade is a gambler and a notoriously unlucky one at that. You see there will be a huge tournament in the hidden grass about four days from now. Me and my team will go there and with luck, bring her back. Undoubtedly she will be in need of protection. From her creditors. He said that last part with a wink. Then he was standing and heading out of the training field saying, do your best Naruto. And be sure to stay out of trouble while I'm gone. Naruto watched his form receding into the distance. The second he was out of sight Naruto leaped to his feet and gathered his chakra. He thought as he concentrated, okay step one is motion. His chakra flowed into his right hand and out to hover in his palm. He set it to spinning. Dot. Three hours later he gave up and grabbed one of the water balloons that Jiraiya had provided him with. He forced his chakra to spin, faster and faster until. Pop. The water balloon exploded. That was a pain. But the first step is already done. Now for speed and consistency. Got to get it even to make it explode. He pulled out a rubber ball from a second box. Once again he worked at it. Several times the ball popped but nothing like with the water balloon. Another hour later he was starting to get aggravated. Explode damn it. Naruto sent a massive surge of chakra through his arm and the rubber ball blew up in his face. His accomplishment was short-lived though as his stomach twinged with hunger. Thirst. He grimaced and let his arm drop. If Inada were here I could have a taste and keep going. But she's back at the mansion. He growled to himself and sat back down. It was annoying. He could summon so much power, but with the small amount of blood he had been allowed lately, he could only manage small bursts. 
He heard quick footsteps behind him and turned. It was a very out of breath Hinata. He asked, what's up Hinata-chan? Did you need something? It surprised him to see her out like that. She must have run all the way there as fast as she could. Hinata caught her breath and said, I I felt. Like you wanted me so. I came. Naruto thought, that's the third time now. It had occurred to him that just thinking about her sometimes seemed to alert her to his thoughts or something along those lines. It was in retrospect, pretty awesome. He motioned for her to come and sit by him. She walked over, still slightly out of breath, and sat down next to him. She gave him a soft kiss on the cheek and asked, so. What did you want? Naruto smelled her neck. His mouth watered at he said, actually I was wondering if I could have a drink. Her eyes widened and she smiled. She leaned forward and he bent his head to kiss at her neck. They had been experimenting for days and he was officially addicted to Hinata. His fangs pierced her skin and he sucked at the wound. At the same time he rubbed between her shoulders with one hand. She closed her eyes and mumbled something even he couldn't catch. He closed his own eyes as he savored her delicious blood. There wasn't a word that described how she tasted, but it didn't matter to him. As long as he could do this to her. Just him. It would make him content. Eventually he released her and simply sat there with his arms around her. He put his head on her shoulder as warmth coursed through him. He listened to Hinata's heartbeat and inhaled her sweet perfume. As he hummed contentedly Hinata spoke, Naruto-kun. It was the intro to a full question. Yes Hina-chan. She twiddled her fingers as she turned her head to look back at him. She asked, do you think it's time to um, tell my father about us. Dot I know he won't like it. But we can't go any further. Till he knows. Naruto sighed and licked her ear, yeah. I know Hinata, but are you ready for it? You know his most likely reaction will be to forbid you seeing me immediately. She nodded at that. Her acceptance was all he really needed. He said, okay. We can tell him tonight at dinner then. Do you want to do it or should I? Hinata turned around and pushed her face into his chest saying, I'll do it Naruto-kun. I need you to help though. He said, fine. I guess tonight will be the last peaceful one for a while. Naruto and Hinata chose to sit together for dinner. He ashi watched them uneasily across the table. Usually Hinata sat across from Naruto, but tonight she was as close to him as possible. It made his skin crawl to see that boy so near his daughter. Sure he was kind and strong, but he was also an unpredictable Jinchuriki. And he never knew what the boy was up to. He cast his eyes to where Nigi sat across from Hanabi. His younger daughter had gotten her hair cut for some reason, and Nigi looked uncomfortable. He put it out of his mind. Hinata was the one he was worried about. She kept shooting Naruto nervous glances. Such furtive looks did not escape him. So after several more minutes had passed in complete silence he felt compelled to address the situation. The Ashi asked Hinata, tell me Hinata, why have you chosen to sit there tonight? Instead of looking to him she looked to Naruto as if asking him something. Her body language worried him. And now that he looked at Naruto harder, the young man looked tense. The Nabi and Nigi had turned their eyes to watch the exchange unfold, but they didn't comment. Hinata at last said, I just wanted to be close to Naruto-kun. Red alarm bells began to ring in his head. He thought, don't tell me she still feels the same way towards him. I thought all the constant contact and watching would have made her get used to his presence and dispel that aura she thinks he has. And why after a month does she suddenly do this? The Ashi said bluntly, don't think that I approve of you being so close to him. Even like this. I was forced to let him into our home. It wasn't my choice. Hinata's eyes widened slightly and she almost unconsciously. Shifted closer to Naruto. The boy for his part narrowed his eyes at the harsh statement. Hinata gulped audible and said, um. Father. There is a something. I needed to. Tell you. The ashy felt his expression cramp into a scowl, don't say it Hinata. Just don't. I don't want to hear that you confessed feelings to that clueless boy today. Compassing himself he asked, what? Is it Hinata? His voice was tense and irritated already, but he couldn't help it. She looked down and said, Naruto is. Is my boyfriend. The ashy felt a sharp pain somewhere behind his right eye start to pulse. Disbelief and anger coated his voice as he. Not quite calmly asked, what did you say? Hinata was about to try again when Naruto said in an even but louder voice, I'm her boyfriend. That's what she said. His first reaction to this was to smile, almost despite himself, his lips turned upward. But it wasn't a kind smile. It was a death grin. He thought, this must be a prank. That's it. Even if they were together, Hinata would never tell me because she knows how I feel about the boy. This must be a prank set up by him. Otherwise Hinata would never go along with it. That's right it's a prank. Must be. It wasn't funny though. Not at all. He said, don't play with me boy. Hinata interrupted him, dad. I'm serious. Naruto is my boyfriend. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you sooner. 
The ashy looked to her again, trying not to glare at his own daughter, are you trying to tell me that this happened before today? The Nada and Naruto both froze. And he ashy was torn between denial and vengeance when Hanabi said, about two years right. Everyone looked at her in shock. She shrugged, I'm just guessing. Naruto and Hinata both nodded mutely. The ashy almost killed the boy right there. But he turned and asked, why? Why didn't you tell me the first day? He shouted out the last bit. Hinata cringed, but Naruto put a hand around her trying to comfort her. Once again Hinabi piped in, perhaps unwisely, because they both knew you would never accept them together. Everyone else knows. Even Niji has known for a few months at least. The ashy's gaze dragged like nails on a chalkboard. He asked Niji, why didn't you inform me then? His voice was barely contained. Niji said slowly, I might not approve of Naruto. In fact I dislike him, but I see how happy Hinata is with him. And he is stronger than me. I had no right to give them away. The Nabi said, if you want someone to blame, you should probably blame yourself. Father. The Ashi's eyes bugged out and he shouted, to your rooms. Both of you. Niji and Hinata both stood up, but before Hinabi left she said, if you force them apart. They won't be the only ones who won't forgive you. Then she was gone. He looked back at Naruto and Hinata. They both looked very nervous, but Naruto had an expression that Hiyashi had never seen before. It was anger. But a defensive anger, like he felt he was protecting her. They stared at each other, neither one speaking after Hanabi and Niji's departure. Eventually he said, Naruto Uzumaki. I forbid you from seeing my daughter. Orders from the third be damned. You are to leave this house as soon as you are packed to go. Naruto said, with all due respect sir. You can shove that order up your own rear. I'm not leaving Hinata and I can have Gramps in here in 10 minutes to make sure you keep in line. Don't think I'm not serious. That shocked Hiyashi out of his frown. His jaw dropped and he gazed, horrified, at him. He said, you insolent child, I could kill you with a single touch, and you dare to threaten me, I would be within my rights to hospitalize you right now you demon brat. The words had hardly left his mouth when he felt a hard slap across his face. Hinata was breathing hard as she shouted, don't talk to Naruto come like that. She looked livid and for the first time in his life Hiyashi apologized to her, I'm sorry Hinata. I overstepped. She quickly pushed back from him and sat in Naruto's lap. Hiyashi saw rebellion in her lavender eyes. He realized. She would leave. To follow him. In an instant. She would forsake her home and live with this boy. He put his own breathing under control and forced himself to ask her why. Daughter. Why do you feel such for him? He is a lower class poor ill-mannered demon vessel. Is there anything more undesirable than him? Hinata said, Naruto is the only reason I'm alive. He is the only person outside this mansion who was ever nice to me. He helped me when I was being beaten up and led me home when I ran away. Her voice resumed its normal quiet tone. He was always nice and he taught me never to give up. If it wasn't for Naruto-kun I would have ran away for good or given up being the heir. I never wanted to fight. The battle. I wanted friends. She turned to hug Naruto tightly. Love. Naruto placed his head on hers and closed his eyes briefly. Silence descended on them again in the aftermath of Hinata's words. He ashy circulating them through his mind. He forced himself to imagine letting them stay together within the walls of his home. It was repulsive, so very much against his desires. He wanted his daughter to stay pure, not. With this. Boy. The ashy Naruto shook his head quickly. He said, Hinata-chan wants your approval before we do anything else. I know that you don't like me much, but it's what she wants. And it's better late than never. There was a moment where neither Hinata nor Naruto breathed, waiting for Hiyashi to speak. It wasn't long in coming. He said, I do not approve. You are unfit for my daughter. If you were of noble blood it would be different, or if you were a hero. Someone who could reliably protect her. It would be different. But as you are now, I can't accept you. Hiyashi leaned back and continued, but you both seem set on this course, and my hands are tied. Since it doesn't seem as though I can stop it. You are free to stay. And? Date. My daughter. The ashy glared across at Naruto, but if anything happens to her, I hold you responsible. Now leave, before I change my mind and kill you instead. Naruto nodded, but decided to make his position clear. He said, thank you. But just so you know, you couldn't kill me if you tried. The ashy's eyes dilated. Okay. If that's the case I don't mind at all. He was across the table in a second. Naruto's eyes opened wide, but his reflexes were honed to a razor edge from training with Niji. He pushed Hinata away and at the same time, ducked his head to the side. Hiyashi's two extended fingers, which had been aiming for his throat, grazed past his cheek. Naruto stood and took a fighting stance, ready for Hiyashi's charge. The Hayuga came in swinging. Naruto realized that the man was using the twin fingers of Death Dot, which is what he had named it, after Niji jabbed him in the chest with it. 
He dodged the older man's strikes, which were accurate, but slow. It wasn't a problem dealing with Hiyashi if he kept to this technique. Naruto's eyes shot wide as Hiyashi changed attack styles midway through and jabbed his left hand's index and middle fingers into his throat. Naruto choked momentarily and stumbled back. Hiyashi straightened up saying, it's over boy. You're a walking dead man now. A few more heartbeats and your body will shut down. Naruto grinned and massaged his throat. He twisted his neck till it popped, then took a deep breath. In reality there had been a huge amount of chakra behind that attack, but compared to his chakra, which was extraordinarily hard to suppress, it wasn't a big deal. A moment later when he was still standing easily, Hiyashi blinked in surprise. He asked, how are you still standing boy? Naruto said, I've trained with Niji for weeks now, and I was never good at blocking the gentle fist. So I ended up taking a lot of hits. Thing is. I got to the point where even your death touch doesn't hurt me. It hurts, but it won't put a dent in my chakra. He grinned, you might say I'm the toughest opponent any Hyuga could face right now. Your most powerful attacks don't affect me at all. The Ashi took a step back. Naruto straightened and walked towards him. And passed him, to where Hinata was pale and worried behind Hiyashi. Naruto hugged her. She whimpered, Naruto-kun. Don't do that ever again. Please. I thought he would kill you. The Ashi turned to see Hinata, who was blinking away on shed tears. He was trying to blink away his own disbelief. He had used a full power Jukin on the boy. He should be alive. By all rights he should have dropped dead the second his fingers touched his throat. But Naruto didn't even look scratched. Hiyashi tried to work things out in his head. Naruto couldn't possibly develop an immunity to the gentle fist. Could he? It was unimaginable. Even if it was possible, he hadn't trained with Niji near enough. That kind of complex resistance would take years or even decades to develop. Your chakra points didn't just become stronger in a month and certainly not strong enough to resist a killing blow from the leader of the Hyuga clan. Naruto turned to him and said, we'll be going now. He took Hinata's hand in his own and led her out of the room. Hiyashi watched them go, still without understanding. Tomorrow he would need to speak to the Hokage. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.